back. So, you know, we're anticipating that we're gonna get, they're going to get their guys back, so they might start, you know, still run the ball. We don't think they're going to go away from that, but we do got to be cautious of, you know, Ryan throwing the ball. Quarterback Roger McCrary sees multiple aerial threats in Michael Pittman Jr. and rookie Alec Pierce to defend this afternoon. I oh, know um, we noticed that last game how they had Taylor so they had to throw the ball a lot. So we noticed this game um they kinda of did good with that like so I feel like they just now go away from that just could have got Taylor back. So we feel like they're gonna use a piece of that going into this game too, throwing a deep ball to Pierce and also getting to Pittman too. And it's time for a look at the injury report presented by Farm Bureau Health Plants for Tennessee. Best news of the week so far, safety Imani Hooker and linebacker Bud Dupree are back in the lineup today. Hooker completed concussion protocol and practice all week, as did Dupree, who comes back from a hip injury. Right guard Nate Davis continues to have a foot issue. He is out for today. Dylan Radens looks to get the work in that spot. Wide receiver Mason Kinsey and linebacker Joe Schobert are standard elevations today. Other inactives include linebacker Zach Cunningham with an elbow, Defensive back Ugo Amati with a foot. Linebacker Joe Jones with a knee. Fullback Torrey Carter with a neck. Defensive end Sam Okawanu. And wide receiver Kyle Phillips, who had a hamstring issue pop up on the injury report late in the week. He is downgraded to out. For Indianapolis, they look to get both of their stud running backs back on the playing field today in Jonathan Taylor and Naheem Hines. Hines out of concussion protocol. Taylor with an ankle problem. Linebacker Quiddy Pay continues to nurse a high ankle sprain. He will not play in this contest. Pay was ruled out Friday along with wide receiver Kiki QT, linebacker Shaq Leonard, and JoJo Doman. Other inactives for Indy, quarterback Nick Foles, center Wesley French, defensive end Eric Johnson is also down. You can plan on getting better with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Better coverage, better rates, and better customer service. Find out at FBHP.com. Another slate of games are ahead today, and we look at the storylines with NFL matchup. DeAndre Hopkins made his season debut, went for over 100 yards as the Cardinals grabbed a Thursday night football win. Good morning, I'm Lucas Panzica. 42-34, the final over the Saints. Andy Dalton with three interceptions. The Saints dropped to 2-5. and five. The Cardinals improved to 3-4. and four. Elsewhere in the AFC South today, the Jaguars have lost three in a row, including a divisional loss to the Colts last week. They host the red-hot New York Giants, who have won three in a row. They are 5-1. and one. Kickoff at noon central. The Texans traveling to the Raiders. Both teams have just one win on the season. Front office shakeup in Houston happened this week. Franchise parting ways with Executive Vice President Jack Easterby. That's an early afternoon kick, 305 Central at Allegiant Stadium. In the AFC North, the 2-4 and four Browns visit the 3-3 three and three Ravens, both coming off losses last week. Matchup of the NFL's lead rusher and Nick Chubb against the top 10 Baltimore rush defense. Kickoff at noon central at MNT Bank Stadium. The Buccaneers are 3-3, three and three, hoping to bounce back from a loss to Pittsburgh against the struggling Carolina Panthers, who just traded away Christian McCaffrey. That's a noon kick in Charlotte. Marcus Mariota was the NFC Offensive Player of the Week as the Falcons are tied for the NFC South lead at 3-3. Three three. They are at the 3-3 three three Bengals, who defeated the Saints in Week 6. Detroit is in Dallas as Dak Prescott comes back into the lineup for the 4-2 and two Cowboys for the first time since his Week 1 thumb injury. Detroit trying to get back on track. Lines are 1-4 and four coming out of their bye. At 3-3, three and three, the Packers still trying to jumpstart their 24th ranked scoring offense after scoring only 10 in last week's loss to the Jets. They'll get a chance at the Commanders starting Taylor Heineke at quarterback in for the injured Carson Wentz. They'll kick that off at noon from FedEx Field. Meanwhile, the Jets have won three straight. They're 4-2, and two, visiting another slow-moving offense this week in the 2-4 and four Broncos. 305 Central kickoff from Mile High. An AFC-NFC matchup at SoFi Stadium. The 4-2 and two LA Chargers playing host to the 3-3 three three Seahawks at 325 Central. It's the 52nd all-time meeting between the franchises. Seattle holds the slight edge, 26-25. Kansas City, after dropping their second loss at home to Buffalo, is off to the West Coast to face the 49ers. It'll be the Chiefs' first trip to San Francisco since 2014. Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey notched his 31st career 100-yard game last week. One more will move him past Hall of Famer Tony Gonzalez for sole possession of second most 100-yard games all-time by a tight end. 49ers just acquired Christian McCaffrey in a trade with the Panthers. 
he may make his debut with the 325 Central Kick at Levi Stadium. Sunday night football is in Miami and Dolphins quarterback Tua Tungavailoa expected back after missing two games in concussion protocol. Dolphins trying to put a stop to a three-game losing streak after their 3-0 start, hosting the 2-4 Steelers who grabbed a big win against Tampa last week. Monday night football should see the return of another former Alabama quarterback, Mac Jones, expected to start for the Patriots as they host the Chicago Bears. Coming up on this edition of Titans Countdown. It's a big news week for the Titans, and we have a jam-packed hour of Titans Countdown. Titans great and tight end Delaney Walker hangs up the cleats and retires a Titan. Amy Wells has an exclusive conversation with number 82. There's a new stadium on the horizon for the Titans in the future, and Mike Keith sits down with Titans president and CEO Burke Nyhill with all a 411 on the new stadium. General manager John Robinson talks Titans after the bye week. It's Titans and Colts part two, and Coach Mack has his first thoughts on this game on the way. Titans Countdown, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. The interviews and news on your Titans, plus the keys to this game from head coach Mike Vrabel. It's all ahead on Titans Countdown. This is Titans Radio. Inside Nissan Stadium, we bring you Titans Countdown, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Plan on paying less for the coverage you need with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at FBHP. Dot com. Our head coach joins us now, Coach Dave McGinnis. The Colts found a different way to win against Jacksonville last week, Mac, due to the lack of their star running backs. Matt Ryan found seven, seven different receivers, got rid of the ball quickly. And, Mac, the good news today is that the Titans defense gets back Bud Dupree and Imani Hooker. So how helpful are they going to be in stopping this new style of Colts offense? Well, Rich, you're, you're, you're very uh, honest and you're very spot on by saying they got rid of it quick. 2.5 seconds last week for, for a multitude of throws for Matt Ryan. And they knew they didn't have the running backs. And so his release time at 2.5 seconds, that means that you're going to have to be able to collapse a cylinder inside that center guard triangle. And you're also going to have to be able to match hands. And match hands, as you well know, is, is trying to be able to match that quarterback when the front hand comes off the ball and gauge where it's going to be and knock it down inside. But they're trying to get the ball out quick. They've got big combat catchers at receiver. Michael Pittman Jr. got 13 for 134 yards. He's had 38 straight receptions without a drop. Very reliable dude out there. Deion Jackson uh, out of the backfield caught 10 for 79 last week. Paris Campbell, 7 for 57 in a TD. Kyle Granson, the tight end, 4 for 38. And then Alec Pierce, three for 49 and a, and a touchdown. So as you said, they spread it out. So today, if they want to start doing that, then we've got a spot tackle in the back end very, very well. And I'm glad you mentioned Alec Pierce. He's a rookie receiver out of Cincinnati who is coming to the forefront of this Colts offense. What stands out to you uh, uh, about him to you? You and I vetted him very hard in the draft, Rhett. We liked what we saw on tape at Cincinnati with that football team. Uh, he's 6'3", 211. He ran 4'4", 1, which is Really moving for a guy that big, 40 and a half inch vertical jump. I talk about combat catches. That's being able to get up and get the ball at its high point. This guy's got nearly a 41 inch vertical jump. That's NBA style vertical jumps. Three cone drill at 713. And you say, well, Coach Mack, why does that matter? Change of direction is outstanding. He was a second round pick, 53rd overall, and he's played up to and beyond that draft pick. And he's getting better week to week to week. Mac, running backs Jonathan Taylor and Naheem Hines are going to be back for the Colts today. Does that mean that Shane Bowen has to prepare for two different types of offenses? That's a legitimate question, Amy. And, and look, Jonathan Taylor, we know that if he's healthy, they're going to hand him the football. We've prepared for that type of running game before. I've done a very good job of stopping it, but we're going to have to do it today in conjunction with this throwing game. Also, you mentioned Naheem Hines. Naheem Hines is Hines is one of the most versatile running backs in the National Football League. 716 snaps in the past four years. He's lined up as a wide receiver or in the slot. That is immense versatility. So, yes, we will have to prepare for that quick throw game, but we've also got to be able to stop the run, Amy. The Colts' offensive line has been through several iterations between Matt Ryan's quick release last week and then making a change at left tackle to former Titan Dennis Kelly. How does Jeffrey Simmons and company have to affect the cylinder? Well, you're, you're so correct in, in focusing on the cylinder. That's that center guard triangle 
we talk about quite a bit, and that's that cylinder uh, six and a half to seven yards deep behind that, that triangle. We've got to be able to collapse that. And then I talk about matching hands with the quarterback, something that, that T. Williams works on all week with his, with his charges there on the defensive line. That's with eight, with eight people or more in the box. They get six, uh, 1.6 yards before they ever touch somebody, so we've got to keep pushing. That's very beneficial, and we have got to get Derrick Henry to his fourth step. That is critical for any explosive back. You've got to be able to get him to his fourth step, and to do that, you have got to be able to get some push up front. It's going to be extremely important to secure the edges, but that push up front from inside tackle to inside tackle is going to be very, very uh, crucial in this ball game today. Mac, one of the keys is that Ryan Tannehill needs to be protected so that the Titans can be successful, and the Colts have some weapons on defense that can really disrupt what the Titans are trying to do. Yeah, there's some names, Amy. When you start looking at their defense and you start grinding tape on them, uh, their two linebackers, you know, back there are really playing well without, you know, without their top linebacker. EJ Speed's the highest-ranked run defender in 2022. He's got a tremendous, tremendous GPS to the ball. We're going to have to get hats on him on the on the second level. Yeah, he and, he and Zaire Franklin are, are guys back there that are a big, big problem. And so we've got to get our hats on them. They are number two in the league as far as fewest missed tackles in this league. They're a sure tackling defense. And then corner Isaiah Rogers, this guy is a, is a really important piece to their defense down near the box and down near the line of scrimmage. Coach Mack, special teams, it's always important to be, uh, that is a phase of the team, but the effort against the Colts today, how important is it going to be for the kicking duo of the Titans to be on point. Well, let's just say this, Rick. Today, punts and field goals, our guys need to be the best duo on the, duo on the field. Bottom line, end of story. Our team gets you up to date on your team. Titans Countdown, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans, moves on in two minutes. The Titans Countdown, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans from Nashville, where this afternoon the Titans are the host to the three, two, and one Colts, as both clubs are looking for another valuable AFC South Division win in this 2022 season. Coming up postgame, we'll take a look at the sack numbers against the Titans offensive line in the Coors and Fire and Security Protection Report. Don't trust just anyone. Trust the experts at Coors and Fire and Security. Visit them at Coors.com. Well, the week has been chock full of big news Titans-wise. A new stadium on the horizon. It's Colts week. But our next guest on Titans Countdown is arguably the best free agent team acquisition for the Titans in history of the Titans. He led his team four straight years in receiving, was a leader on and off the field as a two-time Titans Walter Payton Man of the Year winner. Today, he's the 12th Titan, along with Oilers great Dan Pastorini. And fresh off of his retirement announcement last week, here's Amy Wells with good old reliable number 82, Delaney Walker. Play fake, Mariota throws, it's caught. Walker, five, end zone, touchdown! They slipped the 35-year-old out of the backfield. And that pass is nearly intercepted. It's batted instead to Delaney Walker. 35-30, 25-20, 15-10, 5, touchdown, Titans! Delaney Walker. Delaney, I guess we just have to start with the most obvious question, and that's why is now the time to retire? I feel like I sat at home a, a little too long. This should have been something that was done a while back, but again, I said uh, transitioning out of the NFL is hard. It's no other job like it. As players, we always want to think we can keep playing, and uh, I realize now that I can't play anymore, so uh, I thought it was just right that I retire a Titan because the things that I felt like I set here uh, will go a long way with me as well. 14 years in the NFL, seven years as a 49er, seven years as a Tennessee Titan. Why are the Titans home? It was just so much I accomplished here. Got a lot of things done. I set a lot of goals and I feel like I tried to bring the team together to change the culture here. And I think that's where my roots lie, so. Of course, you had a lot of accomplishments on the field, but off the field, you were Walter Payton Man of the Year twice for the Tennessee Titans. You were a team captain four years in a row. You were a three-time Pro Bowler. All of these things to contribute to 
the team as a leader. Why was that something that was so important to you as part of who you were, not only as a player, but as a human? I just think when you have uh, the opportunity to be in the spotlight or be an athlete and play a game, you should be able to give back to the community too. Um, sometimes I feel like the fans, they do a lot for the team, but don't think they get a lot back from us. And I didn't want them to feel that way. So my goal was to be out in the community, trying to reach everyone I could to show them like, yeah, we play football, but we still care about this community. Most of us are not from here, but when you play for a team, you should give back to the community you plan for. And that was my mindset. I went out on the field, but gave it all I can. And then when I was out in the community, I tried to do the same thing. On the field, you've said that your best football was here in Tennessee, and of course the numbers back that up. What was it about this place that made you play at such a high level? I would have to say just, you know, going out into that atmosphere on Sundays and, and hearing the crowd and, and them always having our back. Even though, you know, we wasn't good the first few years, they still came to the game. That's courage, you know, and, and that, that gave me more courage to go out there and just say, you know what? Even if we lose it, I'm still going to give it 100% because the fans, they see that and they acknowledge that. And as long as I can show them that, they knew that we wasn't quitters. The Titans organization has had a lot of success since you've left even. What does that mean to you to be able to see that now? It means a lot. That's the, that's the biggest thing, you know, to see these guys getting on the Monday Night Football, talked about NFL Network, ESPN. That's what it stands for. That just shows everything we built, it came together. It's starting to come to life. And these guys that's on the team now, they know it. They know how to handle it. They making it come true. They, they see it. They feel it. They believe it. Well, we're glad you're a Titan for life now. Yes, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> thankfully, I'm, I'm glad to be a Titan for life. The week of preparation has led to the final conversation before the Titans play. This is Titans Radio. Titans and the Colts part two from Nashville. Kickoff coming up in about the top of the hour. But right now we are going to take a look at the Heisman race as college football finishes more exciting games yesterday with Heisman Watch. New to the list, Hendon Hooker went 18 of 24 for 276 yards and three touchdowns in Tennessee's 65 to 24 victory over UT Martin. He also rushed for 28 yards in the win. Caleb Williams completed 25 of 42 pass attempts for 381 yards and five touchdowns. Williams was also sacked four times in USC's loss to Utah. Bryce Young completed 21 of 35 pass attempts for 249 yards and two touchdowns. That was in Alabama's 30-6 win over Mississippi State. Heisman Watch presented by Nissan, home of the Heisman House and home of the Titans, Nissan Stadium. Nissan, the official auto partner of the Tennessee Titans. Perhaps the biggest news of the week came out on Monday as the Titans and Nashville Mayor John Cooper announced an agreement for a new lease and a new stadium. It's going to be right next door to Nissan Stadium in the near future. You'll want to hear this next four minutes because Mike Keith talks with Titans President and CEO Burke Nihill with all the information you need to know. It is an exciting day, Mike. We have reached an agreement with Mayor Cooper with respect to a new stadium that would be built on the east bank of the Cumberland River. We're picturing a facility of about 60,000 capacity. It would be an enclosed facility. And I think what is probably exciting news for Titans fans, this lease would keep the Titans in Nashville and Tennessee for another generation. We're looking at a 30 year lease for this new facility. So just for specifics, where exactly is the new stadium set to be built? It would be built on our current stadium campus. So if our stadium today is, is up towards the riverfront, the stadium would be built further back towards the east and between the current stadium and the highway. So safe to say parking is going to be impacted. Parking will be impacted. And we know that that's a pain point for our fans. And so we've been working really hard already to identify parking alternatives, transportation alternatives to make coming to Nissan Stadium a great experience even with that disruption. We will communicate, we will over communicate <laughs> those solutions. Every city that has built a new enclosed stadium has gotten a Super Bowl. You're saying that would be your expectation for our new stadium? Yeah, absolutely, that would be my expectation. The NFL 
came to Nashville in 2019. And frankly, they, they took a chance when they brought the draft here. Only major cities had gotten uh, the NFL's biggest events up until that point. And there's no question that Nashville delivered and in spades. And so those same people, the, the events programmers uh, for the NFL, uh, they took notice. And there is no doubt in my mind that the NFL would come to Nashville with a Super Bowl. All right, so the number one question that I've gotten from Titans fans outside of, are we going to host the Super Bowl, is what about PSLs? What do you expect the role of PSLs to be in the building of the new stadium? For a long time, PSLs have been a reality of construction projects of this scale. And so PSLs will be a part of this project as well. That said, it's been critically important to Amy. It's been critically important to the organization as a whole that we find a way to honor existing PSL holders. The PSL holders, some of whom uh, purchased their PSLs back in the late 90s, they're the reason why we're here. And, and they have been loyal to this organization for decades. And there is just no scenario in Amy's mind where we don't honor them as part of the transition into a new building. What that looks like, uh, we're still working through some of the details, but we are committed to giving every PSL holder a credit to purchase a new PSL in a new building that is in line with their original investment and their original PSL. Again, a lot of details to be worked through, and we know how important it is to communicate with our existing PSL holders as soon as we have all of those details, and we will very, very soon. So how soon do we start construction? <laughs> well, you know, to not count our chickens, again, there is this there is this city process sure. that, that will be ongoing, and so that will be the focus over the next few months, is both the legislative process and the community outreach and, and, and input gathering process. If all of that were to go according to plan, next fall is probably the earliest that construction would actually be. There's a design process that needs to continue. There's a procurement process that needs to begin. And so next fall to winter is probably the earliest that construction would begin. All right, so if that's when construction starts, when will it be completed? Our goal has always been 2026. We're not going to put an arbitrary date on completion that would ultimately result in a construction process that is hurried or a design process that is hurried. And so if that means that ultimately the first games and first events aren't hosted at the stadium until 27 and not 26, we will take a responsible approach to managing that construction schedule. What have the Titans been up to since they last played? Get caught up on Titans Countdown when we continue. It's time to hear from the general manager. John Robinson's comments on Titans Radio, brought to you by R.J. Young. Technology solutions that power your business. Visit them online at rjyoung.com. John, as you prepare to play the Colts today, do you see a lot of difference in them from three weeks ago? Yeah, I mean, I think last week when you watch them, you know, they obviously threw it 58 times um, with Taylor and Hines out, changed their game plan around a little bit. But we'll see if those two guys are back and see if they want to lean on those guys. Both two really good players. They got other good players, too. You know, Pittman's a good player. Uh, the tight ends are a great group. Uh, Ryan threw it around, around really good. Uh, offensive line, you know, we've, we face those guys a lot. They're big. They're strong. So, you know, we'll see and, you know, work on put a game plan together and then make adjustments like we always do. Coming off the bye, you get some people back. One that really stands out to me is safety, Amani Hooker. Why is he so important to the overall defense? I think it's his intelligence, his playmaking ability, his instincts. Uh, I mean, there's a reason why we committed to him before the start of you know, the season. He's very communicative, gets guys in the right spot, good playmaker, just has a nose for the football. Uh, it's great to have him back out there. Was the bye at a good time for your rookie class? Yeah, I mean, I think so. You know, those guys, they've, they really, I looked at the calendar and we'd really been at it about 11 or 12 weeks uh, from the start of training camp. And, you know, obviously we've got 12 weeks left in the regular season. So it kind of came at the midpoint, you know, but they've done a really nice job this week of attacking a week of practice. Chigga Cockwell had an excellent game the first time against the Colts. What is he doing better that's going to allow you to use him more the rest of the year? I think he's developing more savvy and just a better overall feel for the offense and, you know, how he's to run this route or how he's to run that route. Competitive as a blocker, you know, he's got good quickness and good speed to get to the points and the landmarks he needs to. He's improved. Seems like you've had injuries everywhere throughout this team, but in the defensive line, you've had a consistent rotation. You've had a lot of different combinations. That group has worked out about exactly as you hoped. Yeah, knock on wood um, that, they're, that they're healthy. But yeah, those guys are playing really well together. I think when you get some continuity and some, you get the same faces out there, 
you know, a lot of those games and stunts and stuff that we do, they just have a better feel for where the, you know, their teammates are going to be and the landmarks are going to try to hit. And uh, they're playing really well. We're going to need them today. From Titans players to the general manager and head coach, exclusive Titans access is always here. This is Titans Radio. Plans from Nissan Stadium where the Titans and Colts play for the second time in three weeks. And kickoff happens to be in just a few minutes. Alongside Brett Bryan, I'm Amy Wells. Time to look at the AFC South Notebook. In Houston, pass rusher Jonathan Greenard is going on injured reserve after suffering a calf injury in practice earlier this week. He is estimated to return to the field in four to six weeks. And Texans and executive vice president of football operations Jack Easterby decided to part ways earlier this week. Easterby assumed an influential role in personnel decisions in 2020 following the firing of Bill O'Brien. And today's opponent, Indianapolis. 2021 sixth round draft pick and quarterback Sam Ellinger. He is now the backup quarterback, moving veteran Nick Foles to the third spot. In fact, Nick Foles is inactive today. And uh, head coach Frank Reich says that the decision to promote Ellinger had less to do with anything he did or did not do. It had more to do with the possibilities of the ways that they could use him schematically. The Colts have a package of plays where they can use Ellinger in certain situations. And in Jacksonville, through six games, the Jags are sixth in the NFL with 13 fourth down attempts. They have converted five of those, which is 38.5%. And here's what's interesting. Each of the five converted fourth downs has extended a drive that ultimately ended in a touchdown. So something to store away for later. And wide receiver Jamal Agnew is day-to-day with a knee strain. He is inactive as the Jags take on the Giants today. That's your AFC South Notebook this week as we pivot to the Bet MGM player to bet on with our Titans radio colleague. Here is Ramon Foster. My Bet MGM player to bet on goes to no other than Danico Altry. He's been tried and true. If you want to go against him, that's fine. But in all the times he's played his former team, he has been the guy to go after and set the tone for this team. I think everybody knows that this is Jeffrey Simmons' defense. But when it comes to him playing his old foe, He leads the charge. He's been productive. He leads them. He takes over those games. And if for anything, watch his past performances and you'll understand why he's your Bet MGM player to bet on. Get the Bet MGM app today. Bet parlays, props, and futures and turn game day into payday. Now you're winning with the king of sports books. Please bet responsibly. Just ahead, Titans insiders Jim Wyatt and Buck Rising have a roundtable discussion with Rhett Bryan on a busy Titans week. All of that and much more just before kickoff here at Nissan Stadium. You're listening to Titans Countdown, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans, getting you ready for this next Titans game. October 27, 2008, the Tennessee Titans in Nashville, hosting the AFC South Division rival, Indianapolis Colts. With 3.31 left in the fourth quarter, Chris Johnson salts it away with this play. He gives it to Johnson, running right. He turns the corner, 15, 10, 5. Johnson dives, touchdown, Titans! Your final score from Nashville, the Titans 31, the Colts 21. Priceless moments in Titans history presented by Priceless Foods and Priceless IGA. Grocery shopping made easy with low prices you can expect every day. You're listening to Titans Countdown presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Titans and Colts Part 2 kick off at about 12 and a half minutes from now, but we bring in our Titans insiders, Jim Wyatt of TennesseeTitans.com, Buck Rising of the Buck Rising Show on 104.5 The Zone here in Nashville. Jim, what a week it's been for the Titans. Let's jump into the Colts week first. The Titans get back safety Amani Hooker from concussion protocol, and that is huge news for this Titans secondary. It is huge news. It's going to give them a little bit of flexibility there because uh, I think Amani Hooker is going to work in a spot that we have not seen him work yet this season. Which uh, so he'll be on the field with with uh, Andrew Adams. Some it's going to be a different look certainly on defense against this big. Colts defense, uh, big Colts receiving core, and uh, I think you know it's, it's going to be key. But they also welcome back linebacker Bud Dupree, 
and with the way the Colts threw it around the yard last week, it may be just in the nick of time. No question, and certainly with uh, Ole Daney going on IR a, a couple of a couple of days ago with that nagging neck situation, it just helps everything all the way around. Not only do you get the top end talent of a player like Bud, who I mean indisputably helps them when when he is available. The availability has been the biggest question, but also just to generally help your depth. Give Rashad Weaver a little more help on the outside. Continue to bring that pressure on a quarterback who you know is going to cough up the football from time to time if you just get home. Jim, we'll get to another Titans great in a moment, but there's one that's developing right before our eyes in Derrick Henry. He's an integral part of this offense, and he's knocking on the door of franchise greatness with two touchdowns today. He can be the franchise leader in touchdowns, leapfrogging the great Eddie George. It's hard to believe. Yeah, it is, and Eddie George is here today to witness it if it does, in fact, happen, wearing an old throwback Oilers uniform, his his Oilers, uh, Tennessee Oilers throwback uniform. It really is incredible. I mean, we have been fortunate here to see so many good running backs here. Old Campbell was certainly here, was certainly a Houston guy before our time, but from Eddie George to Chris Johnson, who also is here today, to Derek Henry. Derek doesn't care about these individual accolades. You ask him about him, he, he'll kind of dismiss them, but he has really been special and is playing himself toward a Hall of Fame uh, you know, position. And quickly, Buck, a new stadium announcement. You had Mayor Cooper on your show this week. What did you glean from that conversation? Uh, that they're very excited about not just the stadium and everything that it will bring, but how much it means for the city of Nashville, the continued growth, everything from Oracle up the river to what they're going to do on the East Bank down here. It's going to be really exciting. They're trying to get it done by August 2026, which I feel is ambitious. It's hard to believe Delaney Walker is now retired a Titan forever. Big moment for him this last week. Yeah, I'm glad to see him, him get a moment, uh, and he certainly appreciated it. He, he, I know you know, Rhett, you were there, saw him going through, shaking hands with everybody there. He appreciated having that time. He deserved that time. Those two voices you just heard are our Titans insiders. Jim Wyatt of TennesseeTitans.com, Buck Rising of 104.5 The Zone. On the other side, the head coach, Mike Vrabel, gives us his keys to Tennessee and Indianapolis in mere minutes. Wherever you are, at work, tailgating, or just got out of church, take Titans Countdown with you. This is Titans Radio. Of the year. Looking forward to seeing this AFC South showdown. Mike Vrabel, keys to a Tennessee victory today. Well, I've told the team we got to fight our ass off with fundamentals. That's what it is. That's who we are. we got to embrace that. Special teams, we talked about it. But the other thing we're talking about is getting these guys to set the table for each series. Right? Whether it's punt return, you know, and you're trying to set up the offense, whether you're punting it and you're trying to set uh, the table for the defense, just making sure that it's a complimentary. And they're a large part of what we do to start each and every series. You know, offensively, you know, it starts with, with running the football, but it also starts with making sure that we're fighting for every first down. You know, Indy's uh, second in the league with 16 three and outs. We have success when we're able to string some plays together that end up complementing each other. Uh, allows us to, to go into the end zone and, and try to share some success. We've run it six times. We've thrown it six times. It's six different guys who scored touchdowns for us. So if we can get down there, hopefully we can continue that success. And our defense cannot you know, give up the, the amount of big plays that we have and change his field position and momentum. Uh, that's critical. That's something that we focused on. And we have to go out there and execute it, make them earn it, make them drive the football where now we bring in some some ball disruption opportunities, tipping a pass, not going to fumble out and all those things. And, you know, making them kick field goals. They, they got back into the game last time by scoring some easy touchdowns. If we can make them kick field goals and take care of the football and, and get some turnovers, that, that's the type of game we need to play. Mike, good luck today against the Colts. Thank you. Before we continue, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. The Titans play here in 2022. This is Titans Radio. This is your official home for Titans football. Touchdown, Titans! WGFX FM, Gallatin, Nashville. 104.5 The Zone. Solutions like free service calls on their repairs, low monthly payments on those repairs. Spring Hill Heating and Cooling, available anytime at springhillac.com. It's a big one here in Nashville. Sweep the Colts today, and you set yourself up for success in the division. Once again, Tennessee and Indianapolis square off at Nissan Stadium, and Mike Keith and Dave McGinnis are set to call it next. Titans Radio Game Day. Total Titans coverage brought to you by... What type of team y'all want to be? Are small. You got the whole world watching now. Five, 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 
Talk about your teammates. Put the team first. Titans on three. One, two, three. Titans. Every snap counts. Every inch of field matters. Henry turns it up, runs into Diggs, runs into the end zone. Allen tried to sneak. He got nothing, or so it appeared. They did it. They did it. Sack. Yes. It's time for Titans football with Red Bryant. Amy Wells, Titans Radio's head coach, Dave McGinnis, and the voice of the Titans, Mike Key. Touchdown, Titans! Your Tennessee Titans take the field, and kickoff is next. Opportunity knocks for the Tennessee Titans today. With a fifth straight win over Indianapolis, the Titans extend their lead in the AFC South. They sweep the season series with the Colts. They dropped the Colts to 1-3-1 one, and one in division games. Tennessee would win its fourth straight game overall. But the challenge will be greater than it was at Indianapolis on October 2nd. Coach Dave McGinnis, how are the Indianapolis Colts better today than they were three weeks ago? Mike, they're a healthier football team than they were three weeks ago. And the other thing that's happened is when they were without their top two running backs, Taylor and Hines, last week, they found another way to move the football. They spread it out, they started spinning it to their big combat catchers. And so we're gonna see two different types of offenses melded together today, but they are much more uh, physical and they are a much more healthy team than they were two weeks ago. Referee is Ron Torbert, umpire Mark Pellis, down judge, rookie official Max Causey, line judge Tim Padraza, Field Judge Ryan Dixon, Side Judge Keith Washington, Back Judge Tony Jocelyn, Ron Torbert, one of the best in the league. He was the referee for Super Bowl 56 last season. This crew has called a league high 11 defensive pass interference penalties and three offensive pass interference penalties in 2022. The latter is good for second among NFL crews. They average about 14 penalties called per game. That is middle of the pack. The Colts win the toss and elect to defer, so the Titans will begin on offense. In the first four games this year, the Tennessee Titans scored on their initial possession. They did not at Washington. They will have a chance to go today with Hassan Haskins drifting deep to receive the kickoff from number seven, Chase McLaughlin. When does does appear to be a factor down on the field we have seen some cross gusts we will see how it affects the kicking game it appeared as though it was as the punters were working in pregame warm-ups so here we go round two titans colts afc south this is the only game of the entire nfl weekend with two winning teams haskins Fields the kick on the run at the 10, to the 15, to the 20, to the 25, and he is taken down at the 27, maybe the 28. Penalty markers have been thrown. Flowers made the tackle. Awaiting the step off. It's obviously going to be on the Titans. Here's Torbert getting on the microphone early today. During the return, holding, return team number 52. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Tennessee's ball, first and 10. For the Titans, up front, left to right on offense, Dennis Daly, Aaron Brewer, Ben Jones, Dylan Radins, Nicholas petit Frere. Tight ends, Austin Hooper, Jeff Swain. We'll also see Chigakakwo. Wide receivers, Robert Woods and Nick Westbrook-Akine. Running back, Derrick Henry. Quarterback, Ryan Tannehill. Titans will start at their own 17 after the penalty. Your starting lineups brought to you by top tier tri clean Sitco gasoline. It keeps your engine clean. Sitco, let's go together. In the shotgun, Tannehill with Henry on his right hip. They motion Hilliard around the backfield. Pro right side, complete outside the 20 yard line. It's caught by Woods, tackled there by Rogers. It's a gain of about six. Colts on defense up front. Taekwon Lewis, DeForest Buckner, Grover Stewart, Yannick Ngakwe. Linebackers EJ Speed, Zaire Franklin, Bobby O'Karake. 
in the secondary, Kenny Morris, Stephon Gilmore, Rodney McLeod, Rodney Thomas, Brandon Faison, and Isaiah Rogers. Second down and four. Tannehill under center, starts with an empty backfield and then moves Henry seven yards deep. Give Henry on the left side, pounding forward. 25, 30, and beyond to the 32. Tackled by Thomas, it's a first down for the Titans. Nice job by the Titans. They put Henry out there to get a man zone declaration. He pulled back in, they were in zone. Then they shifted the, the, their defensive front to the Titans' right. They ran an inside zone to their offensive left. Really, really nice job of setting up the defense for that play. Westbrook Akine wide to the left. Woods wide to the right, now motions left. At the 32. Swain now tight end, moving to the left. Free play as a jump by the Colts. Henry is taken down after gaining two, but it looked like Buckner was the man who was offside. Nice job with Tannehill with the hard count. Offside, defense number 99, five yard penalty, we keep first down. Be first down at five for the Titans at their own 37, moving right to left on your radio dial. Just underway with Chamber of Commerce weather in Nashville. It is fantastic. Colts play more three deep defense post safety than anybody in the league, and that's what we've seen these first three snaps. Two tight ends to the left, receiver either side, Henry now seven yards deep. Woods motions right, give Henry running to the right, and he is taken down from behind as hustling to make that tackle with speed. EJ Speed, loss of one, it's second and six. EJ Speed's really a good GPS linebacker. What I mean by that is he can locate the ball. He's done a great job all season of doing that behind the line of scrimmage. They motion to the defensive left then, and they shifted down and brought a guy off the edge. Mason Kenzie is in the game at wide receiver in a three-man bunch tight to the left. Play fake, Tannehill looking to screen it, throws, gets it to Henry, and Henry will be taken down for a loss. That's Franklin who makes the tackle with Stewart. So the Titans have seen first and five now become third down and nine. Yeah, Zaire Franklin was spying on Henry then. They, they ran the motion, faked the play to the defensive left side, but they were all spying, especially Franklin was spying on Henry then. That's why he was sitting on top of that screen, trying to develop to the right side. Hooper is in the game at tight end, tight to the left. Bunch set of three receivers tight to the right. Tannehill in the gun, takes the snap, blitz coming, he's in trouble, he's sacked. Kenny Moore, the nickel, gets him back at the 25. So a drive that started with promise ends with a quarterback sack. Now they walked Moore right down to the line of scrimmage then. That was, that was a blitz all the way. They got the Titans in third and chains, which is third and seven plus, and brought heat, more than four people. Normally they rush with four, that time they brought six. First and five became fourth and 16. And now Naheem Hines is back to catch this punt from Ryan Stonehouse, rookie Colorado State. Snap is good. Stonehouse gets the punt away. Wobbly Knuckler caught by Hines at the 23 to the 25 to the 30. And he's taken down at the 33, maybe the 34 yard line by Raider, the tight end. So here come the Colts to play offense, their first chance. No score, just underway in Nashville. Dennis Kelly, Quentin Nelson, Ryan Kelly, Matt Fryer, Brayton Smith. Tight ends, Mo Ali Cox and Kylan Grayson. Wide receivers, Michael Pittman Jr., Paris Campbell, Alec Pierce. Running back, Jonathan Taylor, quarterback, Matt Ryan. For the Titans on defense, up front, Danico Autry, Jeffrey Simmons, Tier Tart, Bud Dupree, linebackers Dylan Cole and David Long. In the secondary, Roger McCrary, Andrew Adams, Kevin Byard, Christian Fulton, and Amani Hooker. From the 33, Ryan drops, fires right side complete to Campbell. 
And he is hit and knocked out of bounds by Fulton after a gain of about five. The offense that we saw last week against Jacksonville is what they were doing. This, that ball came out in under two and a half seconds. You saw they were spread out. They're 11 personnel, a little bit condensed splits. Now they're in more condensed splits here, Mike. Calling it at the line without a huddle, the 37-year-old Matt Ryan. Ryan with a play fake, looks left, throws left, got it complete for Campbell again. He's tackled right at the 40-yard line by Hooker. It brings up third down and three. Here comes Mitchell as a sixth defensive back, Terrence Mitchell, and Rashad Weaver coming in to rush the passer. Third and three. Talked about spot tackling so far. Two excellent spot tackles on really quick throws. Again, no huddle for Ryan. He drifts into the shotgun, puts Taylor on his right hip. Titan showing blitz. Confusion for the Colts right now with eight on the play clock. Play fake. Ryan throws, it's batted down. At the line of scrimmage, it was batted down by Autry. And that is a three and out sponsored by LRS. If your home business or construction site needs an extra level of clean with portable hand wash stations or portable restrooms, call LRS at 615-350-8480. Great job of matching hands. Also, Bud Dupree was around the left tackle so quick. That was an excellent, excellent rush. Matching hands, we talked about that in spot tackling. So far, the Titans defense has done that perfectly. Matt Hawk to punt, Robert Woods is deep. Snap is good, Hawk's punt is away. Knuckler, it's short, getting out of the way the Titans. And it'll be down by Brown outside the 25 yard line. Poor punt by Hawk, and the Titans get a break. Each team has had the ball once, neither team has been able to tally. No score, 9.35 remaining first quarter in Nashville. You never know when that next Titans highlight will happen. Stay right here to see what's next. This. Two rushes, eight yards, one reception for minus three. Ryan Tannehill, two of two for three yards. He was sacked one time. No score, Titans starting at their own 29. They'll run Henry on the right. Dragging captors with him across the 30 and up to the 35 for a gain of six yards. Stewart with first contact. 11 personnel shifted the tight end back in the backfield to make an I formation. Lead strong out of that I formation to the defensive left. Excellent push by the right side of the Titans offensive line. Titans come with Jeff Swain and Kevin Rader as extra tight ends. They both go to the right. Woods motioning to the left to join Westbrook Akine on second and four. Henry running to the right side will be taken down after gaining two yards. Tackle by McLeod. Try to counter hand back. He got caught from the back side. They set the big heavy people to try to get the front set to that side. Ran the counter hand back. But Indy's got really good team speed off of the edge. Caught him from behind. Third down and a long one for the Titans at their own 37-yard line. Cody Hollister checks in at wide receiver. He will come wide to the right with Westbrook Akine. Swaim and also Woods to the left. Now Swaim moves into the slot. Titans in the pistol. Keeping Tannehill to the 40. Tannehill to the 45, and he's tackled by Franklin at the 46-yard line. First down for the Tennessee Titans. Zone read to the to the split side or the open side. He moved Henry over to his left to get that zone read. Everybody drew in on defense to Henry on that inside zone fake. Tannehill around the edge, first down. 16th carry of the year for Tannehill. He has gained 31 yards, has not run as much as he has in years past. As a matter of fact, most of his carries have been kneeled down. I formation, receiver either side against a five-man front. Play fake, Tannehill looking, firing downfield, man is there, it's Hollister with the catch, 35, Hollister inside the 30-yard line and taken out of bounds at the 29 by Gilmore for Cody Hollister, his second catch of the year, and it's an outstanding pickup for the Titans on the play. 
of right at 26 yards. That's an excellent concept against the post safety. Play action, transcontinental, got behind the corner over on the far side. Excellent, excellent play call. Three receivers tight to the right, Hollister wide left. Tannehill at the gun. He will give it to Henry running around right end, and Henry will drive tacklers to about the 26 yard line where he's thrown out of bounds by Franklin. Gain of three, it'll be second and seven. That was a hand sweep all the way. That had no intention to cut back. He was trying to hit the edge and turn the corner. We talked about Indy's team speed in the opener of this broadcast. They showed it there. Second out for the Titans. Chig Aconquo has checked into the lineup on second down and long with 6.35 to go first quarter. Aconquo and Hollister in tandem wide to the left. Now Aconquo motions in tight. Tannehill gives Henry, hits the middle of the line, can't find anything, and is taken down. And Gakwe with the tackle. It'll be third down and seven. Really a, really a solid wall in there by Indy's defense then. Hit the thing. Henry tried to bounce, but he was bouncing out of emergency then, not by design. Titans are one of two on third downs. Mason Kenzie is one of the men who just checked in among the four for the Titans. Included in that list is Dontrell Hilliard, who takes a spot on the right hip of Tannehill in the shotgun. Third down seven. Hilliard now moves into the right slot. Tannehill drops, pops, looks, fires, caught! Inside the 15, what a throw, what a catch. Robert Woods, McLeod with the tackle, and the Titans have entered the Pinnacle scoring zone. For more on Titans Banking for Pinnacle, visit titansbanking.com for all the details. What an excellent job of manipulating the cylinder by Tannehill. Two pumps, didn't panic, moved up into the cylinder. Woods, that's a tremendous combat catch by Robert Woods. Huge play. Two catches for Woods so far in this game. Gain of 14, ball at the 12. Hilliard stays in the lineup. Akakwo now motioning left to join Swain. Tannehill, gonna throw it. Fires in the flat, nearly intercepted. Passes incomplete, intended for Hilliard. Okereke defending. Both those backers behind the line of scrimmage are very good space linebackers. What I mean by that is they're really good foot athletes and they can cover a lot of ground in space. We just saw it right then. This defense can really run. They can run, Mike. They can run. We've talked about that all week. They're very fast, very fast in the second and third levels. Henry back in the game on second and 10 at the 12. Tight end Raider motions into the backfield. Titans now at an eye. They run Henry to the left. He cuts down to the 10 and just a little inside to the nine. Aggressive tackling by Franklin and McLeod. It'll be third down and a long seven. High formation, those two big front end loaders we talked about in there, you know, down to three technique and that shade technique. Those two big guys, Buckner and Stewart, they are pushing that pile a little bit now, Mike. Titans need seven yards for a first down, nine yards for a touchdown. They are 13 of 13 in the red zone this year. 12 touchdowns, just one field goal, and now some really bad news. Ben Jones, the Titans center, is down and cannot get up. And so Corey Levin is having to warm up taking snaps before this very important third down inside the Colts 10. Ben Jones will have to leave the game. Mike Brable's Titans keep playing this one when we return. Corey Levin in at center. The Chattanooga product will be snapping to Ryan Tannehill on third and seven at the nine. Tannehill firing, got it co no, incomplete. Hilliard has it knocked away by Gilmore at the last minute. Would not have been enough for a first down anyway, coach. No, it wasn't enough for a first down, but again, we saw the closing speed from the back end with Gilmore. You're going to have to get your hands on it and tuck it away quick with these people as, close, as quickly as they close. 27 yard, 27 yard field goal, I should say. Left hatch. Bullock. He's four of five on the year. Snap, set, kick. He's five of six on the year. Good! Titans three, Colts nothing. 
403 remaining first quarter at Nissan Stadium. Randy Bullock's 27-yard field goal caps off at an 11th place, 62-yard drive, 532 off the clock. That's your Nissan drive summary. Nissan Stadium, home of the Titans. Nissan, official auto partner of the Tennessee Titans. Big play of the drive, Ryan Tannehill to Cody Hollister for 27 yards. Hollister's ninth career catch, his longest. Isaiah Rogers is deep for Randy Bullock's kickoff. Bullock on the year has recorded 14 touchbacks. Rodgers, a very dangerous returner, averaging 24 yards per. He's coming out. Nope, he's going to take a knee. He's set up to come out, let the Titans run all the way down, and then at the very last moment, took a knee. And now we've got a fight. It's Quentin Nelson and someone. Yeah, it's a shocker, and it's a shocker. It took this long for these guys to get at each other. Yeah, these uh, these two teams don't care for one another, there's no doubt. Not one bit. 3 nothing Titans, 4.03 remaining first quarter. Second chance for the Colts offense. Ryan, two of three for seven yards on the first sequence. Taylor gets his first carry, and he is breaking tackles to get four yards. Nice run by Taylor. Long finally got him on the ground. Again, ran through a tackle at the line of scrimmage. We're going to have to keep wrapping this guy all day once they hand it to him or throw it to him. He's 5'10", so you see him and you think, well, he's not a big guy. He weighs 226. Yeah, he's a legitimate load in there. Second down, six yards to go. Ryan's gonna throw it. Fires it short, got it complete to Campbell, who is battered at the 33-yard line by Long. And the hustling Simmons. It'll bring up third down and a short two. Gotta love seeing big Jeffrey Trace and come get a lick on that guy. That's good football. Crowd comes to their feet. Second, third down of the game for the Colts. Going to give Taylor a carry, and he bounces it outside. Has the first down to the 35. Stays on his feet to the 40, and is finally taken to the ground by Adams at the 45. That's that quickness. That's that quickness. Dylan Cole scraped to the outside, and Taylor stuck his right foot in the ground and went right around him. We had a free runner at him. Missed him. He has run in the four threes before. We talk about the power at 226 pounds. NFL's leading rusher a year ago. On first down, Matt Ryan firing short of Campbell under pressure, incomplete. Really nice call right there by the defensive coordinator. What we what he did then, he showed like he was going to play a zone, and he brought heat up in that center guard triangle. Autry had the real heat, forcing the incomplete pass. It's second down and 10, Colts at their own 45. 227 remaining first quarter. Titans lead three to nothing. Ryan swings it into the flat to Taylor, and Adams decks him at the line of scrimmage. Excellent read by 47, Andrew Adams, seventh year safety out of UConn. Now Andrew Adams, that's spot tackling right there at its best. So far, the Titans have done a really nice job of the ball being in the air and spot tackling. Three receivers to the right, including Pittman. Watch him. He caught 13 last week on third down and 10. Ryan sees it breaking down, throws short to Taylor, and Taylor is going to be tackled at the Titans 48 by Adams again. Colts could go for it here, but they're going to send the punting unit out. Really two nice tackles by Adams dropping out of the sky then to make that tackle on that over the middle check down. Very dangerous play, looks simple. You throw it to an athlete like Taylor, you got problems if you don't get him immediately. Woods sets up deep. Hawk the left footer onto ostensibly punted here. The Titans playing safe just in case. Snap is good. Hawk the end over ender. Woods comes up and makes a fair catch at the 20. Not much of a job by Hawk. He's had two poor punts. 
One ten to go first quarter. Titans with the ball, leading three to nothing. Drew Adams five weeks ago off the Steelers practice squad. Today making his 37th career start. Two big tackles helps the Titans get the football back. They'll start at their own 20, leading three to nothing with one ten remaining in the first. Tannehill, four of six, 43 yards. Henry, seven carries, 22 yards. Akakwo motions into the backfield. Tannehill play fake, screens it. Henry, 20, 25, and Henry is taken down just short of the 30-yard line. Stewart and Franklin with the tackle. May move this back closer to the 28. I think they will. It's second at about a yard and a half. Ben Jones, by the way, back in the game at center. He missed all of one play. Henry getting a carry on the right side. Should have enough for a first down if they spot it and it touches the line. I don't know about that spot coming in from that far side, Mike, the way I'm looking at it right here. There we go. First down for the Titans, who do not have to run another play. By the way, Malik Willis has entered the game at wide receiver. Malik Willis is in the game. Now he's coming back out. That's the end of the first quarter. Oh, that got interesting. Usually those last seconds don't have a lot of entry. After one, Titans three, Colts nothing. Orders to go. Let's check scores around the league. One other AFC South game in progress. I'm Lucas Panzica. Jaguars leading the Giants 8-7 on a Travis Etienne touchdown and two-point run. Texans and Raiders will kick off later today at 3.05. Nick Chubb with his NFL best eighth rushing score of the year. The Browns lead the Ravens 10-3. Cincinnati up two scores on Atlanta. It's 14-0. The Packers lead Washington 7-3. Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott, his first start for the first time since week one. Dallas trails Detroit 3-0. Lions Whiteout, Amon Ross St. Brown out with a concussion, and Tampa Bay and Carolina scoreless in Charlotte, Mike. Titans with 76 yards of total offense, 31 rushing, 45 passing. Indianapolis, 33 yards of total offense, 16 rushing, 17 passing. Titans had it for 10-49 in the first quarter. Tannehill, 5 of 7, 52 yards. Henry, 8 rushes, 23 yards, 2 catches, 6 yards. Woods, two catches for 19 yards. Hollister, one catch for 27 yards. 3 nothing. the Titans lead it. They have first and 10 at the 30. Westbrook, Akine, motion, motioning left. Tight end either side now as Hooper goes to the left. Play fake. Tannehill under pressure, firing. It's incomplete. Intended for Woods. Batted away by McLeod, the former Eagle. Now Rodney McLeod closed very, very quickly on that. They had kind of a vice on that, on that, on that route. It was a stop route, right about uh, numbers plus three, and so they were they had that covered pretty well, Mike. Second down and ten for the Titans. Just underway in the second quarter. Hollister and Woods wide to the left. Westbrook Akine. On the right side, single back Henry. Eight in the box for the Colts. Jim Henry on the left, and Stewart will grab him and take him down for about a yard loss. Yeah, Grover Stewart just completely blew that play up completely by himself. He blew through that gap so quickly that really, I mean, Henry had no chance. Hassan Haskins is checking into the lineup now. On what will be third down and right at 11. Titans two of four on third downs. Westbrook, Akine, and Hollister to the right. Woods left. See if the Colts come to the blitz. They're showing it. They don't. Pressure coming. Tannehill dumps it short, it's Haskins at the 30, and Franklin gets him down at the 35. Really nice job by Tannehill just to get rid of it. Titans gain five, but they need 11, and here comes Stonehouse in the punting unit. Yeah, just as you said, Mike, Tannehill 
negotiated that cylinder and moved up really to avoid a sack from his left side and was really very fortunate to dump it off. Hines is deep for Stonehouse's punt. Punt is away. Wobbly spiral. Hines going to let it bounce. He'll grab it at the 11, gets away from a tight to the 15, tries to turn the corner to the 20, and does. Run out of bounds, however, before he reaches the 25. That's a good job by Hines, alertly catching the bouncing ball. Now he's talking to Jeff Simmons, which is not a smart thing to do. Not when he outweighs you by 140 pounds. Well, he's going to the opposite sideline, so it's 53 and a third yards away from him. He's not afraid of him there. The thing about that play is is right there, you've got to be always alert when that ball hits the ground because the returner has a chance once it hits the ground to pick it up and go with it no matter what. You've got to be alert. 12-yard return on the play to the 23-yard line, and so the Colts will begin first and 10 at their own 23. Taylor, two carries, 16 yards. Ryan, five of seven for 17 yards. Three of those to Paris Campbell for 11, two to Taylor for six yards. So nothing doing for Pittman yet, who has 52 targets this year in the five games in which he's appeared. It's coming. Pittman wide left, Fulton's got him. Now give it to Taylor on a delay. And Taylor will move it forward to the 27-yard line, along with the tackle. Gate of four, second and six. Kind of a lag draw, handoff. Taylor made about two jump cuts behind the line of scrimmage to squirt through just for that yardage right there. Really extremely quick feet for a compact back. Taylor in the first meeting between these two teams, 20 carries, 42 yards. But second and six, he gets it again, gets away to the 30, to the 35, to the 40, to the 41. Fired with the tackle. But that's a good run of 14 yards. And now Taylor, who's off to a good start, four carries, 34 yards, has almost as many yards as he did in the first meeting between these two teams. Yeah, they're getting him cranked up. That was just a, that was just an inside zone. Handoff in, very simple, very well blocked. Titans lead three to nothing. Ryan dropping, throwing it in the flat to Taylor at the 42. Does not get away from Adams, but does manage to spin outside the 45 to the 47. Long and Adams combined to make the tackle. Gain of six on the play. It'll be second down and four. You can see the lower body strength on that spin then. Without a huddle, Matt Ryan from his own 47, gives it to Taylor on the right side. He bounces it into Titans territory and is finally tackled at the 46 yard line with a first down, making the stop for Tennessee as Hooker, but they're moving the chains. Yeah, no huddle and feed the ball to Taylor. We kind of expected this once he came back healthy for this game. Ryan back under center, puts Taylor seven yards deep against the four man front. Play fake, over the middle he goes, and it's incomplete. McCrary bats it away from Pierce. What great coverage by McCrary then on Pierce on that dagger route or dig route. Excellent coverage right on his back hip. Nice job, hand placement. Excellent, excellent coverage by McCrary. Clock stopped 11.36 remaining second quarter. Second down and 10 for Indianapolis. Deion Jackson is now in the game. He had a good game against Jacksonville last week. Hey, alert, alert, alert. Out of Duke. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Ryan dropping, throwing short and completing it to the 40-yard line. That's Pittman with his first catch. Schobert with the tackle, gain of six. It'll be third down and four. Again, quick throws, excellent spot tackling. That's going to be this game right now. Don't let one go over your head. Hines enters the lineup. Titans with six defensive backs in the game. Ryan trying to get everybody lined up. Still 10 on the play clock. He does not have what he wants. He will move Pittman in, in tight on the right with Allie Cox. They snap it. No, they don't. They do. Ryan throwing short. Got it complete. What a fake. 
Ryan gets it to Pittman inside the 30, and he's taken down at the 26-yard line. He got me. Well, they, that's why he was trying to get Pittman in there to that closed split over there on that, on that back side to try to sneak him underneath exactly what he got. Looked like Reich was trying to get the timeout. He didn't get it. They do snap it, and then a great fake by the veteran at the 26. Going to give it up the middle to Hines, and he will be taken down at the 29-yard line for a loss of three by Simmons. Big Jeff made a tackle then with one arm and another man all over him. That was a monster play. The Colts feeling like he might have been grabbed by the face mask. The Colts can feel that all they want. Well, he might have been. Jelani Woods has entered the lineup. The 6'7 rookie tight end from Virginia. Empty backfield. On second and 13, Ryan gets rid of it quickly. It's intercepted. 30, 40, 50, Adams 40, 30, 20, 10, 5, end zone. Touchdown, Titans, Andrew Adams to the house. Yo, what a great play. They, they lined up for a maximum blitz on it. What a perfect break. That's as good a break as you can make. Wow, I love that. So does everybody else in this stadium. Andrew Adams, eighth career interception. I asked John Robinson on Friday, why is he going to be in the lineup as they're playing hooker in the nickel? His answer, he's smart. Oh, he's smart. He's made some great tackles this game. That was a big-time NFL ball play. 76-yard interception return for a touchdown. Bullock's point is up, and it is good! 10-0 Titans, 9-25 remaining second quarter. Andrew Adams, side here. One play, 76 yards, return for a touchdown, the interception, Andrew Adams. That is your Nissan Drive summary. Nissan Stadium, home of the Titans, Nissan official auto partner of the Tennessee Titans. First INT return for a touchdown since November 7th at SoFi Stadium in 2021 against the Rams. Kevin Byer, 24 yards for a pick six. Bullock to kick off. Rodgers is deep. Colts were driving. Bullock kicks it downfield. Rodgers from the 1, to the 5, to the 10, to the 15. He's hit, he bounces away to his right. He's to the 20 and he's just decked at that point. Hassan Haskins, the rookie running back from Michigan with the tackle. And a Titan is down. I think that may be Joshua Kalu. Excellent kick coverage by the Titan who've really done that well all year. Titans lead 10 to nothing on a 27-yard Randy Bullock field goal in the first quarter. And just moments ago, Andrew Adams, a 76-yard interception return. Timeout on the field for the Kalu injury. Titans and the Colts, round two at Nissan Stadium. 9-17 remaining first half. Joshua Kalu off the field and to the sidelines under his own power. Colts start first and 10 at the 20. At Ryan, firing right side, completing to Pittman. Pittman makes the catch at the 28 yard line and is hit right away by McCrary. That's a gain of eight yards, it'll be second down and two. Just ran a stop, sit down rep, nice, nice tackle. Jackson is the back. He's on the left hip of Ryan. He takes the handoff. He runs into Cole and takes Cole with him to the 31 yard line for a first down. Moving very fast tempo. This is a tempo offense. Has been all afternoon. You're just taking advantage of Ryan's experience here, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a perfect point, Mike. Ryan on first down. Blitz coming. Ryan gets rid of it quickly to Campbell. He makes the catch at the 35, he's out to the 40, and Long gets him on the ground 
maybe just a little short of the first down. It's going to be, no, it is a first down. First down for the Colts. They gave him the mark. Spot throws. You got a spot tackle. Titans trying to switch it up. What is that? Ryan under center goes toss. Jackson around right in. Titans are there to meet him and take him down for a loss back to the 40. Leading that charge is Hooker. That was a great, great tackle by a hooker. You talk about pulling the trigger. Wow. Amy Wells, Pinnacle Sideline Report on Joshua Kalu. Mike, he is probable to return. It looks like there's just a little cramping. Oh, that's good. Good news. Second down and 12 at the 40. Hines is in the backfield with Ryan. Play fake. Ryan stepping up, throwing short, got it complete to Hines. He's across the 50 in, in Titans territory to the 45-yard line. McCrary with the tackle, a gain of 15. Hines is so instantly fast. Once he catches it on the move, it's a problem. Less than seven minutes to go, first half. Titans 10, Colts nothing, Indianapolis on the move. Titans in a four-man front, Ryan in the shotgun. The former Atlanta Falcons star. Play fair. quick throw, complete to Granson at the 40. Adams with the tackle, Granson, one of the tight ends, picks up five yards. Knew they're gonna use these quick throws that they, they unveiled last week, incorporate it with the run game. This is the offense with tempo that we're gonna face all day. Titans trying to switch in some defensive linemen. Jeffrey Simmons going to get a blow as Walker comes in to take his spot. Matt Ryan on the year. Nine interceptions. Three lost fumbles. Twelve total turnovers. And the Colts are minus seven on the year in turnover ratio. They trail 10-0 here. Titans with good starting field position at their own 38-yard line, moving left to right on your radio dial. Henry, nine carries, 23 yards. Henry running to the left, hits it hard. Unfortunately, he is hit hard after picking up one yard by Stewart. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the NFL. This is Titans Radio. This is your official home for Titans football. Touchdown, Titans! WGFX-FM, Gallatin, Nashville. 104.5 The Zone. 5.15 remaining in the first half. Titans 10, Colts nothing. Titans second down and long. Inside their own 40. Play fake, Tannehill rolling to the right. Looking, he'll throw it away. Wisely so, and there is a penalty marker in the secondary. First signal holding on the Colts. Before the pass was thrown, holding. Defense number 31. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. 31 is facing the former Charger. Who did he hold? He holding Robert Woods. He's trying. He's held Woods on the transcontinental across the middle. High formation. Now Swain breaks the eye and comes tight to the left. Tight end Raider on the right. Henry on the right side, 45, 50. 45, 40, cuts to the outside and is taken down inside the 35 by Gilmore at the 34. Hello, there's that inside zone you're looking for, just a little push, a little bump, combo up to the second level and then let the big man roll. 23 yards for the keg, now 11 carries for 46 yards. Four and a half minutes to go first half. Westbrook Akine, wide to the left. Woods, wide to the right. Two tight ends to the right. Give Henry on 
the right side. He's inside the 30. And will be tackled. And they'll pull it back just a little bit. Let's give him four yards. Another tackle by Speed. It'll be second down and six. That was really a physical run then. You could hear that all the way up here. Mm -hmm. Swaim out, Hilliard in. So the Titans going with two backs. Oh. Extra defensive back racing in for the Colts. Tannehill, Henry on his left, Hilliard on his right. Play fake. Screen it. Henry looking for room. He is going to be taken down at the 26 by his face mask. Penalty marker comes in as O'Karake. the same great deals as you'd get in store so you can save when you order during band practice or at the dog park or wherever. Start your cart with the, the Fred Meyer app and, and save from wherever today. Fred Meyer, fresh for everyone. $35 order minimum. Hello. There's that inside zone you're looking for. Just a little push, a little bump. Combo up to the second level and then let the big man roll. 23 yards for the king. Now 11 carries for 46 yards. Four and a half minutes to go first half. Westbrook Akine wide to the left. Woods wide to the right. Two tight ends to the right. Give Henry on the right side. He's inside the 30. And will be tackled. And they'll pull it back just a little bit. Let's give him four yards. Another tackle by Speed. It'll be second down and six. That was really a physical run then. You could hear that all the way up here. Mm -hmm. Swaim out, Hilliard in. So the Titans going with two backs. Extra defensive back racing in for the Colts. Tannehill, Henry on his left, Hilliard on his right. Play fake. Screen it, Henry. Looking for room. He is going to be taken down at the 26 by his face mask. Penalty marker comes in as Okereke appeared to be the offender. <laughs> Personal foul, face mask. Defense number 58. After this, he's going to go from the end of the play. Automatic first down. The Titans have entered the Pinnacle scoring zone. For more on Titans Banking from Pinnacle, visit TitansBanking.com for all the details. Football being moved to the 13-yard line with 327 and counting remaining in the half. Titans lead 10 to nothing. Two tight ends to the right. Henry on the right hip of Tannehill. Two receivers to the left. Now Henry moves to the left hip of Tannehill. Tannehill gonna throw it, looking, firing right side for Swain, just missed him. He had a step on McLeod, incomplete. Yeah, he had Rodney McLeod on his back hip, but he's about two and a half yards away from him, just missed him. Had to throw it to the outside to make sure that no Colt would have a shot at it, only his man, but just a little too wide. Clock stop, 2.59 remaining in the half, second down and 10 at the 13. Akakwo the fullback, Henry the tailback. Gonna run Henry on the right side. And he is slung down hard by Ngakwe at the 10-yard line. It'll be third down and seven at the 10. So the Titans had this going the other way moments ago, but they had the center out of the ball game, Ben Jones. And so I think they were trying to play it safe. Will they try to see if Tannehill can do more here? Yes, absolutely. Two and a half minutes to go. Hilliard. Westbrook, Akine, and Hollister wide to the left. Hooper is wide to the right. Woods in the backfield. Tannehill looking, firing for Hollister, 
and he catches it at five. He is about a yard and a half short of the first down. And Tannehill's going to get him on the ball. We're going to hit the two-minute warning before this play. The Titans will have fourth down and right at two when we come back. Nothing over the Colts, knocking on the door with a fourth down, a fourth down decision to make. But just ahead, stats, scores, and cover two with Coach Mack on Titans Radio's halftime report powered by the Tennessee Lottery here in a few minutes. Titans have fourth down, and as we can now fully see it, it is a full two yards. They must get the ball to the three-yard line. Titans are two of three on fourth down attempts this year. Colt opponents are five of nine converting fourth downs. What do you like here, Coach? Well, Mike, first of all, they'll probably hard count them to try to get them to move. And then if not, you're going to see some crossing routes. Tannehill in the gun. Somebody jumped somewhere. Is it Raiden's? Or was he encouraged? Ball start. Offense number 75. Five yard penalty. It's fourth down. I don't know that the Titans were going to really snap it anyway. Do you, coach? Well, I mean, that's that was my thought with the hard count, and that's where he started in on the hard count to try to get the opponent to move. We moved. I'm not sure this is disappointing them a whole lot to get this three. Another field goal attempt in the red zone. This one just 28 yards. Left hash. Snap, set, Bullock's kick is up and his kick is good. 157 remaining in the first half. Titans 13, Colts nothing. Nice drive for Tennessee. Eight plays, 52 yards, 344 off the clock. That's the Nissan drive summary. Nissan official auto partner of the Tennessee Titans. So both teams with all three timeouts. The Colts would love to get points here, not only to narrow the gap, but because they get the ball to start the second half. As Randy Bullock has added his second field goal of the day, the 200th of his career. Now this offense has been in tempo for the Colts all day, so this this two minute will be nothing unusual for them. I would expect them to start. You, you need to watch Taylor and Hines in this type of a situation, if with matchups on the second level linebackers, they will try to use that this drive. Rodgers is deep. Matt Ryan has thrown two interceptions. He's 12 of 17 for 82 yards, two picks. One return for a touchdown. But the Titans, the hallmark of their offense this year, getting in the red zone and scoring touchdowns, they've gotten into the 10 twice and inside, but only two field goals. Bullock's kick comes downfield. Rodgers from the one to the five, to the 10, to the 15, and there's Dylan Cole. No more, my friend, no more. He gets smacked. Great coverage by Dylan Cole. Great coverage, weaving through the blockers. Nice face-up tackle, really good. Colts will start at their own 16-yard line. If you're the Titans defensively, if you could get off the field here, you give your offense another chance. As you said earlier, they both have all three timeouts left. Ryan with Hines on his left hip. Titans playing six defensive backs. Rushing four, here they come. Ryan dumps in short and complete. Went through the legs of Pittman too low, second down and 10. He pulled that trigger very, very quickly, uh, Ryan did on that one. Pittman barely had a chance to turn around. A minute 47 remaining in the half. Hitman wide left, Fulton's got him. Ryan staying in the gun. Looking, firing deep downfield and it's complete. Making the catch up at the 36 yard line is Pierce. Tackle made by Mitchell. 
It's a gain of 20 and a first down. Too much time to throw then. That was a deep dig at 20 yards. A minute and a half remaining, clock running. Ryan fires quickly, got it to Campbell, who catches it at the 40, and is taken down at the 45-yard line, a yard short of the first down. Clock still running with a minute 10. Second down and one. Colts get ready to go under a minute. Ryan on second and one, firing, got it to Campbell in Titans territory. He's touched down by McCrary at the 46-yard line. And again, the clock continues to run. We're at 47 seconds and counting. Ryan trying to get him going here. Ryan firing downfield incomplete, intended for Pittman, defending on the play, Fulton. Nice coverage by Fulton. He's right in his hip pocket. And Quentin Nelson way. had appeared to have David Long after the play by the jersey, walking him backwards. No flag on the play with 36 seconds to go. It's second down and 10. Ryan, again fading, pumping, in trouble, hit and throws it away. Over the head of Hines, he was being taken to the ground on the play by Walker. It's third down and 10 with 29 seconds to go. That's a nice job of collapsing that cylinder then. He had nowhere to maneuver and work his feet up inside, so he had to retreat backside. That's how Weaver got him. Ethan Frenia is in the game wide to the right, former running back at UCLA, called up from the practice squad yesterday. Tight show blitz on third down and 10. Ryan with him coming, under pressure, set! Time out, Tennessee! Big Jeff! Jeffrey Simmons collapses the pocket and takes Matt Ryan to the ground. That's a Kroger sack for cash, $100 to second Orvis food bank from Kroger the official tailgate headquarters of the Tennessee Titans. Through its zero hunger, zero waste plan, Kroger is committed to ending hunger in our communities. I love that call by Shane Bowen. All up blitz, they knew it was coming and they brought it. Love that call by Shane. See what Hawks got here. Punting in the opposite direction. Simmons with the quarterback sack, give him four and a half on the year. He takes the team lead. Deep is Woods on fourth and 18. They put a couple seconds back on the clock. 25 seconds to go. Snap to Hawk, end over end putt. He didn't hit this well at all as he hit it to his right, and it goes out of bounds outside the 20. Outside the 25 and at the 28 yard line. Hawk has not had a good game. Well, that was a perfect punt if you don't care about field position. <laughs> I mean, that was not great, 27 yards. So it gives Tannehill a chance if he pins him you figure the Titans just take a knee and get out of here. Instead, you're like, well, what, what, you try something. Kenzie and Woods to the right. Tannehill takes the snap. Under some pressure, Igakwe will sack him inside the 20. And Mike Vrabel says, enough of this. Let's get out of here. Still a successful half overall, but a lot of work to do for the Titans in the second half. You like this tally as you head to the locker room at halftime. Tennessee 13, Indianapolis nothing.
There's only been nine rushing attempts by the Colts in this first half. Uh, Taylor, five for 40. Matt Ryan, 15 of 23, passing two interceptions, so he's on track to pass for another 50 plus attempts. Derrick Henry's getting it done, 13 carries, 53 yards. Ryan Tannehill, eight for 12 for 66. The Colts won the toss. They elected to defer their option to right here, so they get the ball to begin the third quarter and to call this second half. Here is the voice of the Titans, Mike Keith, and once again, Coach Dave McGinnis. All right, Rep. Ryan, I, I think what's really interesting is this is a pivotal moment in this season in the AFC South between two teams, and at this moment, Coach Mack, we're going to see if the Titans can overcome what has been their biggest problem so far in 2022, and that is not getting enough done in the second half. They're going to have to keep working this thing because you know the Colts are going to make a run. Well, they're going to make a run. You're going to need more than 13 points to win this game, and your points are exactly really very well taken. I'm going to be interested to see, Mike, you know, Red just read us how many times that Taylor carried the ball in the first half. I expect to see him carry the ball more in this second half for the Colts, and you're right. The Titans have got to add some more scores. I know that's simple to say, but 13 will not get it done in this game of this magnitude. Taylor did not play a lot in the first half. He had some good plays early on. He had five rushes for 40 yards. He caught three passes for 13 yards and has not been back in the game since, I want to say, early in the second quarter. One wonders if they're saving him for the second half or if maybe he has re-aggravated that ankle. Yeah, I mean, but five for 40, that's eight, that, yeah, that's eight yards a clip. That's a pretty good clip. Mm -hmm. Rodgers is deep as Bullock kicks off. Rodgers coming up to catch it at the two, to the five, to the 10, to the 15, and then he is just smacked. Oh my goodness. Monty Rice, welcome back. Monty Rice? Wow. I mean, he must have had on his invisible suit because nobody touched him until he about decapitated the returner. Chester Rogers looking at 10 teammates saying, why do you all hate me? <laughs> at least you guys over I on mean, the right he, side. He has taken some shots returning kicks. Matt Ryan, 15 of 23, 120, no touchdowns, two interceptions, sacked once. Taylor is back in the game. Ryan swings it out. Campbell to the 20. Campbell to the 25. Campbell to the 27. He has a first down. Tackled at that moment by the hustling Simmons. See, that's the issue. That's a, that's a horizontal throw, but to a big, big combat catcher that gets a head of steam going very quickly down the field. They've got a bunch of big receivers. Campbell, 6'1", 208. He's the smallest. On first and 10 at the 27. Ryan, delay handoff. Taylor finds some room across the 30. He's not hurt. He's up to the 35-yard line. Gain of eight on the play. Tackle made by Fulton. Again, simple lag draw. He starts spinning, jump cut in the backfield. He gets eight yards. They'll call it second and three. They're actually moving Dennis Kelly to the right side. So they are strong right. They're going to run Taylor that way. He's decked by Cole, short of the first down. Nice tackle by Cole. That's a nice tackle on a, on a really, really hard back to tackle with a head of steam. Third down and one upcoming. Colts two of six on third downs. They tried to go unbalanced to the right. And the Colts were unable to pick up the first down. This is third down and one. some confusion about the marking of the ball. The guy with the yard marker didn't move very quickly. It may be some confusion about the clock or did someone take a time out? They're gonna measure, okay? They're interesting. Doesn't look like it's close. Let's see. Boy, it's closer than I thought. As a matter of fact, he's got a first down. Boy, the far chains, which are not official, showed that he needed the 38. That was odd. Well, you know why it's odd? Because the far chains 
are moving the chains for a different game. They need to get in sync with what's happening here. <laughs> so the Colts have a first down after all of that. 13-20 to go in the third. Titans lead 13 to nothing. Ryan's going to throw. Swings it out. Taylor, and he is pummeled after gaining a yard. Autry was there first, and then Simmons. No, Big Jeff is Big Jeff is flattening out and going after these receivers downfield to the sideline. What a player this guy is! He gets angry in this game. Don't blame him. I don't know who makes him mad, but that is a mistake. Second down and nine at the 38. Ryan looking. Throwing ball tipped at the line of scrimmage. It falls incomplete. Excellent job by the Titans Strong to bat it down. I'm talking about Kevin Strong, fourth year man out of UT San Antonio. Nice job by Kevin Strong, matching hands in the pocket. Rashad Weaver, who left late in the first half, went to the locker room with an apparent rib injury, is back. He's going to rush from the left side on third down and nine. Holds at their own 38. And Braden Smith moves. Well start. Offense number 72. Five-yard penalty. It's third down. And now encouragement to the crowd. You've had an impact. And so now the people know. Yeah, keep it up, Nissan Stadium. Keep it up. Please. Third and 14. Jeffrey Simmons says, help us out, crowd. They get louder on third and 14. Ryan, under pressure, firing downfield, got it to Pittman. He's not near the first down. He's tackled at the 48 yard short, long with the stop, but it was the pressure that forced the football out. No, it absolutely was. His retreating when he threw that thing, that was just a little crosser across the middle. Very well played. Spot tackling. I'm going to say that all afternoon. It's been excellent. Averaging just 29 yards a punt, Hawk gets ready to kick it to Woods. Snap. Punt is away. This is a missile. Woods drifting back and he has it go through his hands and through the end zone for a touchback. He was going to field it at the three, which would have been a mistake anyway. Titans get a break, and they get a touchback. 13-0, Tennessee in front, about to get the ball for the first time in quarter number three as we play at Nissan Stadium. An offense trying to really get something going. The team gained 111 yards in the first half. Derrick Henry, 13 rushes, 53 yards. Ryan Tannehill, 8 of 12, 66 yards, sacked twice. Hollister with two catches for 32. Woods, two for 19. Henry, three for 10. Haskins, one for five. The Colts stacking it up tight. Tannehill in the gun. They run Henry on the left side. He bounces it to the 25, and he's out near the 27-yard line where Stewart makes the tackle. It'll be second down and three. That's a decent push up front. It's tough sledding against this defensive front for Indy. Well, you've got a healthy Buckner in there. He has three sacks in the last two games, and Grover Stewart is just a monster in the middle. Yeah, he is, I mean, he is a dump truck. Going to snap it directly to Henry. King cat time. Henry tries to carry around left yeah. end, but Lewis won't let him. And there is a penalty marker down as it's going to be a loss of three. Looks like it's holding on the Titans, too. Insult to injury. Well played by the Colts, by the way. Tycon Lewis blew it up completely. Illegal block in the back. Offense number 78. That penalty has been declined. The result of the play is third down. It's an interesting choice here by Frank Reich because now it is third down and six. 
if he takes that penalty, it makes it second and long and backs the Titans up considerably. So he is taking a chance on one down. Let's see if the Titans can make him pay. They were two of six on third downs in the first half. Colt show blitz. Tannehill under pressure, firing deep downfield, going for Westbrook Akine. It's intercepted out of bounds by Gilmore. So Frank Reich's gamble totally pays off as Tannehill tried to get Westbrook Akine and he threw it just a little short. Well, he took a shot, Mike. He took a big shot when he threw that. He couldn't get all his arm on it. From Buckner. So Hines is deep for Stonehouse's punt. It remains 13 to nothing, Titans. 10-39 remaining in the third. Stonehouse gets the punt away, a missile. Hines back to his 18, juggling catch to the 20, to the 25, to the 30, to the 35, to the 40. And he is tackled by Thompson at the 43 yard line. So the Colts had excellent field position to begin their second possession of the second half. Titans lead early third, 13 to nothing. Starting at their own 42, trailing 13 to nothing. Taylor in the backfield, seven carries, 50 yards. He takes the handoff, comes left, and is absolutely stoned by the Titans after he got maybe a yard. Weaver and Adams combined to tackle him. Shane Bowen called a run blitz then. He fired his linebackers right in the gaps. That's a run blitz he called. Very nice job. We'll call it second down and nine. Colts get on the ball. Four-man front for the Titans. Matt Ryan drops the throw, swings it out of the backfield. Taylor catches it, and he is taken down by Simmons as he reaches the 47-yard line. So it is now third down and five. Titans sprinting on defense. You love the hustle. Well, yeah, I mean, they are going after it. Taking spot tackling to another level. Colts huddle this time. Woods, the big tight end, is wide to the left. Byard's got him. Three receivers to the right. Taylor on the right hip of Ryan. Now Pittman motions left with Fulton chasing him. Ryan dropping, pressure coming, hit as he throws. It's caught by Campbell, did he hold it? He did, apparently, at the Titans 42. McCrary touches him down. Interesting to see a replay because he was juggling this as he went to the ground. I think he did hold it. Yeah, he held it. McCrary lost him off of that nine ball stack. Colts at the Titans 42 with 8.51 to go. Taylor with a carry, looking for room, he finds it. Well done by Taylor as Adams will tackle him at the 36 yard line. Didn't look like there was much there, coach, but he got seven. Yeah, well, that's the way he is and that's why I, I I, I kind of thought coming out in the second half we were going to see some more of him. Naquan Jones checking in to replace Walker. So the Titans going with a little more girth in there, thinking that the Colts may lean on the running game a little harder. Ryan under center. Taylor the deep back. Play fake. Ryan looking deep. Pumping. Has time being chased and he throws it away. Long was coming after him. It'll be third down and three. Ryan, real veteran move. He's got nobody on that side as far as a receiver, but he took sort of a skip, step two or three, and then threw it out of bounds, making sure he was outside the pocket. He got outside the, he got outside the pocket. Big third down. Colts are three of eight on third downs. Three receivers to the right. Pierce now comes left. 
Taylor on the left hip of Ryan. Pressure. Swings it out. Taylor tries to make a move. He is able to gain one yard to the 35 as Hooker makes the tackle. Colts will almost certainly go here. What a great space tackle by Monty Hooker. Wow. It was a great play by safety. Grants it out. Mo Alley Cox, who's been quiet in this game, is in. Titans go with a more conventional personnel grouping on defense. More big people. Alley Cox wide to the left. Three receivers to the right. Fourth down and two. Ryan looking. Has time. It breaks down. He throws, and it is caught by Pittman at the 21. What a catch by Pittman as he was battling Hooker. Talk about combat catches. He went up clear to the top to pull that thing down. Ryan was getting pressure, threw it as high as he could to his big receiver. Taylor out of the game, Hines in at the 20. Colts trying to get set. Titans trying to get men off the field. Four-man front for the Titans. Two deep safeties. They're going to run Hines, and he will be hit by Schobert and driven backwards after gaining one yard. Cole also in on the tackle with 6.34 to go in the third. Titans leading 13 to nothing. He's starting to huddle a little bit more now, the Colts are, Mike. Want to make sure they have the right plays. Pierce and Pittman wide left. Two receivers to the right. Ryan swings it out. Hines on the left side. And he jitterbugs his way inside the 15. Hooker will get him at the 12. It brings up third down and two. Hines is so fast, he's really dangerous when he can get the edge. I've seen him do that on the sideline and take it clear to the pylon when it looks like you have him corral. Branson in, another tight end. Third and two. Quick, quick. Bunch set of three Colts receivers tight to the right. Tight and show blitz. Ryan sends Hines in motion to the right. They swing it his way. He's got the first down and more as he is at the six yard line by Hooker. Nice play. As soon as they put him in motion, he, he out leveraged all of the defense. Tart back in, Schobert back in. First and goal at the six. That's where those big tight ends come into play. They have Woods in the game. Let me correct that. They have Branson in the game now. But they have those big receivers. They're staying with Hines at running back. They'll give him a carry, and he is taken down at the four-yard line by Dupree. Nice job by Dupree, slashing in from behind, grabbing Hines by the hips and taking him to the ground. On the ball. On the ball go the Colts. Second and goal at the four. Titans looking for another big play on defense. Three receivers to the left. Titans keeping an eye on Hines, who's on the right hip of Matt Ryan. Five on the play clock. Ryan snaps it. Looks, floats it into the back of the end zone for Campbell, who catches it for a touchdown. Harris Campbell who's been very active in this game, pulls in the touchdown grab, his second of the year, and the Colts are finally on the board with 4.07 to go in the third. Paris Campbell got loose on the back line all the way across the back of the end zone. And now the work really begins. Yes, it does. On for the extra point, McLaughlin. Out of the hold of Hawk, the punter. Waiting for the confirmation that Campbell's catch was good. It appeared to us it was, and it is. 
Great effort by Campbell, by the way. Here's McLaughlin. Snap, set, his extra point is up, and his extra point is good. New score, 4.07 to go third quarter. Tennessee Titans 13, Indianapolis Colts 7. You knew it'd be a battle in the second half. Plays 58 yards, 620 off the clock. Ryan to Campbell for a four-yard touchdown. And the Colts are within six of the Titans with a lot of time to go. 407 remaining in the third. Haskins is deep for the kickoff, which is belted downfield and will go through the end zone for a touchback. Coach Mack, this offense has just 39 yards since the first quarter. And they have got to find a way to get something going. Absolutely they do. I mean, the defense has been on the field for a long time, and they, where they're going against a no-huddle offense that's moving very quickly. We need our offense to get some traction. Looking for anything and everything they can get to get some stuff moving. The Titans with just 115 yards of total offense on 31 plays, just 3-7 a play. Three receivers to the left. Now they move Westbrook Akine to the right. Akakwo in the backfield lined up at fullback. Play fake, Tannehill rolling to the left, throwing in the flat for Akakwo, incomplete. Buckner had it in terms of Tannehill on the boot, and Franklin had Akakwo. They're not fooling him at all right now. No, they're not. They're on top of the plays. Part of it, I think, Coach, is the Titans just don't have anybody out wide who really terrifies them at this moment. Well, and they've got to be able to handle this front. Hey, spot, spot, spot. Second down and 10 at the 25. Ready. Colts with eight in the box. Henry gets the carry on the left side. Half a yard, maybe. McLeod came in leading the charge, but there were a bunch of Colts there. And now you've got third down and nine and a half, and so it's third down and predictable. Yeah, they've had they've had an eight-man front this whole ball game, and they're just sitting back there in a three deep, saying, "Bring it on." They got eight people up there around the, around the line of scrimmage. Henry in the second half, three carries, four yards. So here it is, third down and nine. Blitz coming. Tannehill has time. Fires complete. Hooper puts on a move. He's got the 30, the 35, and he's run out of bounds by Moore at the 39-yard line. Nice job by Tannehill keeping it alive. And then Hooper with his first catch of the game going for 14 yards, and it's a chain mover. Yeah, that was a big chain mover, and Tannehill did a great job of keeping that alive. And Hooper knew he had to get the first down, so he made the man miss. Swaim is the fullback. Henry back in at tailback. Raider, the other tight end, motions left. Going to run Henry on the left side. It's a cutback. He nearly steps out of a tackle as speed got him at the 43. It's a gain of four. Very close. DJ Speed came back to make the play. If he didn't, that thing's gone. 240 and counting in the third. Titans lead by six points. Tannehill gives Henry. Running on the left side. He gets the football just up to the 45-yard line. It makes it third down and four. The line to make is the 49. Dontrell Hilliard re-enters the lineup. Titans looking for a second first down on this drive. They are three of eight on third downs in this game. 
three receivers to the right. Hilliard on the left hip of Tannehill. Colts acting as if they're coming. Tannehill drops, looks, fires, complete. Caught by Woods at midfield, and he spins across into Colts territory and is down at the 48-yard line. Those chains move as Franklin makes the tackle. Robert Woods, one tough dude. That was a combat catch. He had three people collapsing on him. What a play by Woods. A minute 21 remaining third quarter. Titans began this drive at their own 25. Akakwo motions to the left. Tannehill drops, looks, fires downfield. Did Hooper hold it? Did he hold that ball? Yes, he did. Hooper catches it inside the 30 and goes to the ground at the 25. What a catch, Austin Hooper. What a great catch by Hooper. He went up over the top to catch that thing with both hands, high-pointed the football with a man all up in his business. Gain of 23 on the play. Tight holds 25 in the final 30 seconds of the quarter. Tannehill with seven on the play clock, changing it. Going to give it to Henry, and Henry is met and dropped for a loss back to the 28-yard line by Buckner as the third quarter is going to come to the close. The Titans have not scored a point in the fourth quarter this year. That's going to have to change if they want to win. You just have that feeling. At the end of three, Titans 13, Colts 7. Only one quarter left in this one. Time to check more scores with an update. The Jaguars leading the Giants at home. Travis Etienne over 100 yards rushing with a touchdown. A Trevor Lawrence QB sneak made it a 17-13 Jacksonville advantage. Houston will kick it off later today, 3.05 in Vegas. Baltimore's rattled off 17 unanswered. They hold the advantage at home over Cleveland, 20-13. Joe Burrow has thrown for over 400 yards. He has four total touchdowns. The Bengals lead the Falcons, 35-17. Green Bay up 14 to 10 at Washington. Dallas leads Detroit 10 to 6. Carolina leads Tampa Bay 14 to nothing. Here the Titans lead the Colts 13 to 7 as we go to the fourth quarter. Right now, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Titans Radio. The football rests at the Colts 28 yard line. It's second and 13. Empty backfield for Ryan Tannehill. Tannehill takes the snap, looks, fires complete. Mason Kenzie catches it at the 24. Ryan Tannehill took a hard hit, but he is up trying to walk it off as the Titans pick up four yards on the play. And now Tannehill is gonna have to go to a knee. He cannot stand up. He has never missed a start since he became the Titans quarterback. And now he is going to have to come out of the game for injury as the Titans face third and nine at the Colts 24, leading by six with 14.35 to go. Ryan Tannehill up and off the field under his own power, but he is limping. It appears to be something with his right leg. What an ovation he got as he leaves. But the first meaningful snap of the career of Malik Willis comes right now. 13 to seven, the Titans lead C South rival Indianapolis Colts. It's third and nine at the 24 of the Colts. What do you do, coach? Well, you wanna, you wanna insert, you wanna insure the field goal, Mike. He's going to give it to Hilliard, who will gain three yards at left guard to the 21. And so Willis does the job. He takes the snap cleanly. 
He hands the ball off cleanly, and the Titans have a 39-yard field goal attempt. They get 38-yard field goal attempt for Bullock for what would be a nine-point or two-score lead. Snap, set, Bullock's kick is up, and his kick, good! Mike Vrabel really excited about what his offense did and his special teams taking care of business. He's out to greet everyone. He knows what's on the line today in Nashville. The voice of the Titans, Mike Keith, and Coach Dave McGinnis bring you more of the Titans story just ahead. Titans have a 16-7 lead thanks to a Brandy Bullock 38-yard field goal. 11 plays, 55 yards, 520 off the clock. That's your Nissan Drive Summary, Nissan Stadium, home of the Titans. Nissan, official auto partner of the Tennessee Titans. Bullock kicks it through the end zone for a touchback. We get a pinnacle sideline report from Amy Wells. Mike, Ryan Tannehill has come out of the tent. His right ankle is heavily taped. Nothing official yet, but I'll let you know. All right. I did notice that Tannehill went out to the bench. Willis was sitting with the offense, looking at the Microsoft Surface. He handed the Microsoft Surface to Tannehill, and he took a seat down. Maybe an indicator he's going to go back in the game. Going to give Taylor a carry on the left side. Nothing. Really nice tackle by Mario Edwards, Jr. Good no job. Game. Good job by Mario Edwards setting the edge because Taylor was trying to jump cut and bounce out to his left. Nice job, Edwards. 13 and a half minutes to go. Titans 16, Colts 7. Matt Ryan takes the snap, feels pressure, throws for Pierce, and Mitchell tackles him right away at the 30. Gain of five. It's third down and five. Colts are four of ten on third downs. Wow, that ball's coming out of there quick. He is not going to hold it. Matt Ryan has thrown two interceptions today. He's got Taylor on his left hip on third down at five. It gets loud. Titans rush four. Ryan in trouble. Big Chase stepping up. Penalty marker down. He's sacked! Bud Dupree! Loss of three on the play. It's fourth and eight. Let's wait on the flag. Holding. Offense number 56. That penalty is the climb. He's over the play. Fourth down. Super guard. Quentin Nelson. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Robert Woods is deep to catch the punt, as that's $100 to Second Harvest Food Bank from Kroger, the official tailgate headquarters of the Tennessee Titans. Hawks punt away. Not a good one. Woods going to get away from it. It takes a funny bounce, and the Colts are going to down it just inside Titans territory. That's a terrible punt. Matt Hawk has had a day. Ryan Tannehill is going to continue his day as he is heading back into the football game with a heavily taped ankle. This offense does not have a touchdown today. They would love to get one right here. Ryan Tannehill, 12 of 18, 113 passing. Derrick Henry, 19 carries, 61 yards. The Titans with just 170 yards of total offense but two Matt Ryan interceptions, the difference. Starting at their own 45 after the poor punt. Colts with nine in the box. See Henry take it up the middle, spin his way up to the 50 yard line for five yards. Tannehill limping. I'll tell you one thing, Derrick Henry is hitting this stuff. Even though there's not much room, he is hitting that wall. The feeling that the Titans staff has is he's really in a groove 
And again, his numbers may not show it. 66 yards rushing, but he is getting all he can right now. On second and five. With 11.52 and counting. Titans by nine. Henry gets it again at right guard. Moving the pile, moving the pile. Picking up a first down to the 44-yard line. Tackle by Williams, but it's a gain of six. And those chains move. To your point, to my point, this dude is hitting the line of scrimmage. Malik Willis is entering the lineup, not as the quarterback. Tannehill's still in there. Willis is in a bunch set of three receivers to the right. Hollister wide left. Willis takes the handoff and loses it, and the Colts recover at their own 45-yard line. Titans were trying to run a sweep with Malik Willis, but he did not secure the handoff, and Okereke recovers. Yeah. Now the defense back out there with the Colts getting the ball, 11.06 to go at their own 45. Yeah, he reached for it, closed his pocket too quickly. He just got very, very over anxious to get the ball. See if the defense can respond. It's a big moment for the Colts. They have some momentum now. Taylor is the back. Ryan's going to throw it. Firing. He's got it to Campbell, who catches it at the 50 and is hit immediately. Tackle made by McCrary. Even a field goal is a big deal to the Colts on this drive. Obviously, they want more, but pulling within one score. Ryan firing, got it to Pierce, who makes the catch in front of Fulton and is taken down at the 37-yard line, but there's a flag down in the backfield. Could it be a... Illegal use of hands to the face, defense number 96. The penalty is declined as a result of the play is a first down. All right. So the ball is at the 38 of the Titans with 10 and a half minutes to go. Titans leading 16 to 7. A Titans mistake on offense has opened the door for Indianapolis. Three receivers to the right. Ryan with pressure coming up the middle. He's in trouble. He's hit. Sack! Did he go on three? $100 to Second Harvest Food Bank from Kroger. That's a great, great blitz. Really good blitz. A lot of pressure. Well timed. Very well timed. Jeff Simmons is down, however, coach. I saw him come out of that pile. Loss of four on the play, but Jeffrey Simmons is on the ground. And the Titans, who have more players on injured reserve than any team in the NFL, continue to see strange things happen. Tannehill battling injury. And now Jeff Simmons being tended to on the far side of the field. Yeah, I saw after the sack, big, big Jeff came rolling out of that pile and then went to the numbers and just sat down. Mike Vrabel quickly over there to check on him. A hallmark of the defense, Jeffrey Simmons. You'll remember right before he was drafted, working out during that period of time before the 2019 draft, he suffered an injured left or injured knee, an ACL. He recovered quickly. He is now up and walking off the field under his own power. Well, that's a good sign. Yes, it is. The more he walks, the better I feel. And clearly the better he feels as he will jog off the field. Standing ovation, Jeffrey Simmons, fourth year Pro Bowl defensive tackle.
from Mississippi State. They'll check him out. Maybe throw a little tape on that thing and we'll roll. Apparently he got stepped on, we're told. Second and 14. We get ready to go under 10 minutes remaining in this game. Ryan looking to throw, throw short. Taylor trying to get to the outside, he does, and he's able to make some positive yardage out of nothing as he goes inside the 35 and is out of bounds at the 34. It brings up third down. Taylor's so dangerous out there on that edge, falling his hands. He just outran, he just outran all the leverage. Third down and we'll call it five. Campbell and Pierce wide to the left. Pittman and Ali Cox wide to the right. Titans lead 16 to seven. Campbell motions right. Ryan looking. Run 35 and he is going to be taken down at the 31 yard line. Meyer dove over the top of him very wisely. Field goal team coming out for the Colts. Again, a field goal here pulls them within one score as we're just under nine minutes remaining. McLaughlin is nine of 10. His only miss was against the Titans from 51. This is gonna be a 50 yarder. That was really good coverage downfield. He had nowhere to throw that thing. On fourth down and three. Snap, set. McLaughlin's kick is up and his kick is good. Colts take advantage of the turnover and now it's 16 to 10 with 8.31 remaining in the game. The Titans lead cut to six. Six plays, 24 yards, 2.35 off the clock. McLaughlin with a really big kick. Now this offense has the pressure on them. Can they overcome their mistake? Yeah, absolutely, and then they've got to move the football now. I mean, that's just imperative. I know that's very simple to say, but at this point in the ball game, 831, fourth quarter, six point lead, you've got to move the football with this possession. Well, they need to go get points. Yes, they do. At least three more, you'd certainly like seven or even eight. Hassan Haskins and Dontrell Hilliard drifting deep. Titans going to be alert for anything tricky here. 16 to 10, Titans lead the Colts. Beautiful afternoon in Nashville. Next weekend, we're in Houston, NRG Stadium. Kick comes downfield. Haskins from the goal line. 5, 10, 15, 20. Haskins, 25, tries to step out of a tackle and is taken down just short of the 30. That's an excellent effort by Haskins. And the Titans see Blackman make the stop finally, nearly stepped out of that tackle. Yeah, that was really, that was a very, very aggressive run then by Haskins with that kickoff. Amy, can you give us a pinnacle sideline report, please? Yes, Mike. Jeffrey Simmons has an ankle and is questionable to return. They've got it taped up pretty heavily, and he's here on the sidelines. All right. 29-yard line for the Titans. Colts anticipating a lot of Derrick Henry here. Raider moves into the backfield as a fullback. Titans in a straight eye, running Henry. Henry starting to the left, comes back to the right, crosses the 30, is out to the 33. Lewis made the tackle, it's a gain of four. It'll be second down at six. And now Ben Jones is hurting again. Jones missed a play in the first half. He's been having ankle issues, trying to hang in, dealing with Grover Stewart and an ankle injury. Yeah, that's not ideal. Under center, Tannehill on second and six. Henry coming right up the middle, spinning his way past the 35, out to the 40 for what is an apparent first down. Moore with the tackle, 
7.29 to go in the game. Can't say enough about 22. Just can't say enough about what a man that is. Wow. He knows at a certain moment, and it's this moment, the Titans don't have a lot of options. He's probably going to have to get them home. At the 40. Again, the Colts nine in the box. Henry coming to the left, banging his way forward for nearly four yards. They'll say his knee touched at the 43. Buckner with the tackle at second and seven. And you can't get any more bodies in that tackle box. This is a team, the Colts, that put eight in the box less than any team in the NFL. Not Except, today. Not today. Cooper is going to come in late. Titans with five on the play clock. And Mike Rabel's going to take a timeout with 6.16 remaining, knowing that there was something not right with the personnel grouping. So second and seven upcoming, 6.16 remaining. The Colts have just kicked a 50-yard field goal after a Titans fumble gave them the ball at the 50, or at the 45-yard line. The Titans have gotten Randy Bullock field goals from 27, 28, and 38. The other Titans score, Andrew Adams, 76-yard interception return on Oilers Titans homecoming weekend, a 16 to 10 game is like an old school AFC Central game when the team first became the Titans. We had a lot of these, a lot of days where it looked like this. Hilliard is in the lineup. He and Akakwa were lined up as the slots. Give Henry coming to the right, trying to drive his way forward, and he'll be taken down after he gained maybe a yard. Tackle made by O'Karake. So here is a big third down as we go under six minutes remaining. Titans are four of 10 on the day on third downs. Find a way to protect your quarterback here. That's gonna be the big key because they will be coming on defense. Westbrook Akine, Kenzie wide to the left, two receivers to the right. Tannehill in the gun, Hilliard on his right hip. Tannehill looks, looks, in trouble. Flushed out to his right, throws. Cooper, did he catch it? Did he catch the ball? A juggle? And they are marking it as a catch at the 37 yard line. That he caught it. Tannehill threw into coverage, and the Titans gonna get on the ball. Frank Reich is gonna challenge this, as he wisely should. Injured in a car wreck called Hughes and Coleman Injury Lawyers for a free case evaluation at 800-800-4600. The official injury lawyers of the Tennessee Titans, 800-800-4600. If it stands, it's a gain to the 37-yard line. I think he caught That's it. That's a catch. If I'm Frank Wright, I challenge too because it didn't look like there was any way it was a catch. But Hooper managed to keep the ball off the ground and he pinned the ball with his right hand on his left wrist. That's the best description I've ever heard of something like that, Mike. I don't think I've ever seen that. Well, you just described it perfectly. That's, that never touched the ground. That's a catch. I don't, I don't think it did either, but I, I think if you're the Colts, you're seeing that in real time, like we were, you're saying no way. 5-10 to go. If this stands, the Titans are in good shape, but they are not really in Randy Bullock field goal range right now. Not yet. The big thing that will happen here, here comes Ron Torbert. 
They would lose a timeout if they lose the challenge. Yeah, it stands as calm. Indy challenges, and they lose the timeout with 5-10 remaining. That was, a, that was, a, that was a, just, I mean, what a catch. Give Tannehill some credit, too. Hooper's had two of them in this game. Two tremendous catches. Three catches, 56 yards, plus on a big third down, he made the Colts miss and picked it up. Clearly, Austin Hooper's best day is a Titan. At the 37. Colts jumping around on defense. Henry with the carry, looking for room. Inside the 35, he goes to the 33. Timeout, Frank Reich. Timeout, Indianapolis Colts as Stewart makes the tackle. We'll give him three and a half, maybe four on the play. It's second down, and we'll call it a long six. What a run by Henry. Look, all, all of these runs today, I mean, I just keep saying it over and over and over because you can't imagine how many people are packed in there up front. And also that line, those linebackers are four and a half yards deep and bringing it downhill. And Henry is meeting it every time head on. Coach, I want to go back to something. Austin Hooper entered this game six catches, 55 yards. So he has more yards receiving in the second half of this game than what he had in the first five and a half games. Well, we needed every one of those yards, oh, too. Oh, my goodness. 5.02 remaining. Colts down to one timeout. Titans lead by six points. Henry, 26 carries, 91 yards. Second down, long six. Tannehill gives. Henry makes a man miss and dives his way forward to the 30. Okereke with the tackle, and Reich will go ahead and use his last time out with 4.54 remaining. I think he's smart because the Titans are in a position where another field goal gives you a two-score lead. He's got to save as much time as he can. That's exactly what he's doing. I mean, he's doing the, the, the proper thing. This is third down and a long three. I'm looking at the official chains. The Titans must get the ball inside the 27 yard line. It rests just outside the 30. This would be a massive first down. Yes, indeed. Here comes Westbrook Akine into the game. He does not have a catch. Hooper, three for 56. Hollister, two for 32. Woods, three for 26. Henry, three for 10. Haskins, one for five. Kenzie, one for three. Hilliard on the right hip of Tannehill. Bunch set of three tight ends to the right. Now Hooper motions left, cuts back to the right. Tannehill dropping, looking, throwing ball, tipped up in the air and incomplete. Titans very lucky. Okereke makes the play. So here's Bullock, his biggest challenge of the day. He has converted from 27, 28, and 38. This is 48. Bullock with a chance to give the Titans a nine point lead. remaining in this tilt. Nine plays, 41 yards, 344 off the clock. That's your Nissan Drive Summary, Nissan official auto partner of the Tennessee Titans. Randy Bullock, money man today. Nice job, Randy. 
But you've got Henry, 27 carries, 94 yards. You've got Tannehill, 13 of 20 for 132. You've got Hooper, three for 56. And now some Titans defenders need to step up and make one more big play. Make it, it look, we're gonna get no huddle and we're gonna get, they're gonna be on tempo. Let's go take it away from them. Bullock kicking off to Rogers. Bullock hits it high. Rogers will let it go for a touchback. The defense spreading onto the field, including Jeffrey Simmons. God, I'll tell you what. Colts out of timeouts. Matt Ryan, 29 of 39, 216, a touchdown and two interceptions. Crowd comes to their feet. They know what's on the line here. Titans six defensive backs. Matt Ryan drops the throw, swings it out high, catches it at the 25, he's forward to the 32 yard line. It's a tackle by Adams. And the clock keeps running with 4.33 to go. Here we go. Second down and three. Ryan takes the direct snap. Looks, fires, got it complete. Allie Cox out of bounds, but was contacted inbounds by Hooker. It's a first down, but the clock keeps rolling. Nice job by Hooker, knowing the rule. Yes. If you make the contact inbounds, the clock keeps running. We go under four minutes. Ryan dumps it short. It's Hines making the catch in the middle of the field, and he is buried by Long and Simmons at the 43-yard line. It's a gain of seven. Get up, Big Jeff. There we go. Simmons hurting, but back in there. 340 and counting. Second down and three. Ryan. Under pressure. Gets away from Bud Dupree, and he'll have to throw it away with 328 remaining. It brings up third down. Great rush, Dupree. Great rush by Bud Dupree. Simmons will trot off as the Titans will bring in fresh pass rushers on third down and three. Titans 19, Colts 10. Hines in the backfield. Ryan in the shotgun. On third down. Firing across the middle, he's got it to Pittman. Pittman fumbles at the 45 and the Titans have recovered. No, no, no. They are calling it an incomplete pass. They are saying it was an incomplete pass. Mitchell had the hit. Oh, that's a catch. Mitchell had the hit, he and Grable's going to challenge. Good job. That's a fumble. Hooker had the recovery. And Grable knowing that with a nine-point lead, why not challenge with 321 to play? He has certainly got a good case. This is Grable's first Tennessee challenge. This challenge is a ruling on the previous play of an incomplete pass. That play is under review. Rabel last year, four of four on challenges. Overall, nine of 18. Again, first challenge of the year. Last year, 57% reversals. So you've got to get two feet down and make a football oh, man, move. He's, he's moving with it. Mitchell knocks it out, and alertly, the steal himself, Amani Hooker, covers the football. If this is the case, this ball game is not over, but it is darn close. That's a fun. One, two, and then the ball is knocked out. Byard helping Mitchell get it out of there cleanly. 
Ron Torbert worked Super Bowl 56. He's getting help from New York on this one. It's a no-brainer for Vrabel to challenge it. Colts are out of timeouts with 321 to go. They would get a stoppage at the two-minute warning. Again, so the game's not over. But it's a huge help as Pittman has it knocked out after taking two steps. And Hooker covers it, and then Adams covers him. The question will be about control. Yep. Was he juggling it as he was trying to put it away? By the way, even if it's not tight and ball, it's fourth and four at the 42. Vrabel is waving his defense off the field. He thinks he's got it. <laughs> he generally knows. <laughs> The Indianapolis receiver completed the process of the catch before the ball was punched out by the Tennessee defender. It was a fumble, a catch fumble recovered by Tennessee. To the Tennessee ball first and 10 at the 43 yard line. Please set the game clock to 3 minutes 22 seconds, please. 322. The clock will start on the snap. Tennessee is not charged with a timeout. How did the Titans win in Indianapolis three weeks ago? Takeaways. Three of them. What do they have today? Takeaways, three of them. They scored on one. Terrence Mitchell comes through. Andrew Adams comes through. Who are these guys? We didn't know a month ago. The Titans in this game have 222 total yards, and they've had to work for every one of them. Colts are going to be raking at the ball like crazy. Yeah, hold on to the ball and keep pounding it. What do you say? Hold it with six arms? Hold it with six arms and three hands. Well, this week, the owner of the Indianapolis Colts, Jim Irsay, made news by making a very strong comment about the Washington owner, Daniel Snyder, and his ability to keep that franchise. Got a lot of attention. So... His feelings about Tennessee did not come out. 322, finding out those feelings again, I imagine. Titans in an eye. And off Henry at right guard, moving the pile, still moving the pile. Titans pushing the pile, 50, 45, and he's down. Henry's over 100. Ben Jones stands up and says, more please. Wow! That's a first down for the Titans as we go under three minutes to play. Lewis will finally be credited with the tackle. 31st career 100-yard game for Derrick Henry. His 28th in the regular season. Six of the last seven against Indy. That was impressive. That was impressive. 240 and counting. Tannehill will wind it down. Raider playing fullback with Torrey Carter out. Here's Henry running up the middle. And he is down to the 44-yard line. This will take us to the two-minute warning in Gakway with the tackle. Titans 19, Colts 10. Ryan Tannehill lepping to the sidelines. And the jubilant crowd inside Nissan Stadium sees him unstra unstrap the chin strap and he'll talk to his offensive coordinator and see what the titans do in the last two minutes as we begin the final two minutes at nissan stadium the titans trying to salt away a 19 to 10 win here at nissan stadium we'll have stats scores and a full recap of Tenney and tennessee and indianapolis titans radio's locker room report that's coming up in a few minutes the number one thing you want to do here is not turn the ball over. Just, that's, just, that's obvious. The number two thing you want to not do here, Coach, is? Score. Score. Because if you do and kick the extra point, 
the Colts would still have a chance. Second down and eight at the 44. Give. Henry coming up the middle. 40, 35, 30. And he is tackled inside the 25 by Blackman at the 23. Ladies and gentlemen, go crazy. The Titans are going to win this football game. Yes! 30 carries for Eddie George. 128 yards. Eddie George. What a horse. Well, someone no. in the break said this is an Eddie George performance. That's exactly why you said Derek that. Derrick Henry. That's right. I've had that kind of day. I apologize. But <laughs> the bottom line is 30 for 128. Derrick Henry with an Eddie George performance in an old AFC Central type of game. That'll be five in a row over the Colts. Six of seven, and the second year in a row for a sweep. Tannehill has taken one knee. He'll have to take one more, and the Titans will have won four in a row. And the Colts, like last time, have to be thinking, how did this happen? Yeah, I don't care what they're thinking. The thing about it is, the thing that's so important, how tough mentally and physically is this Tennessee Titans team? How tough are they? It's amazing. Amazing. How many guys did we see limp off? Tannehill takes a knee. Mike Vrabel shakes hands with Frank Reich, who he has a lot of respect for. Yes. He thinks the world of him and the job that he does. He respects the Colts, their grit, and their toughness. And that's what will make this one even more special. Because I think in the end, and it's not meant in a derogatory way, but I think the Titans out-toughed them today. That's a great point, Mike Keith. You're 100% right. You're spot on, as you always are. You've got a great sense of the pulse of this team, and we know what they are. More importantly, they know what they are. A lot of work to be done for the Tennessee Titans. We're just through six games, but this is a big win. Final score at Nissan Stadium. Tennessee, 19. Indianapolis, 10. As the Titans take on the Colts and get it done again. Another Titans game has come and gone. What happened in this one for the Titans is discussed now on Titans Radio's Locker Room Report. Before we continue Titans Radio's Locker Room Report, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. The Titans got it done again here today. This is Titans Radio. Welcome to Titans Radio's Locker Room Report. Final score from Nissan Stadium in downtown Nashville. The Tennessee Titans, 19. Indianapolis Colts, 10. Coach Dave McGinnis, that is as gritty a performance as I can remember from a Mike Vrabel-led Titans team. And, and Mike, he said it best in the second half. This is like an old AFC Central Division deal on a day where they brought back over 130 great Oiler and Titans players and this is exactly what a Tennessee in Baltimore or a Tennessee in Indy would do. And when you look at the final stat line for Derrick Henry, 30 carries, 128, and of course 23 yards on the last run for him, that is a very Eddie George-esque performance. Gritted it out and, and earned every inch of field he got in front of him. And, and a lot of credit goes to that offensive line for pushing piles. Well, I mean, it, it was amazing. And you know, Mike Keith said it very, very well. This was a, this was a game about grit. This, uh, you saw so many Titans players come off of that field with injuries. This was a grown man football game. If you've got any doubt about the mental and physical toughness of this Tennessee Titan team, you, you, have no, you haven't watched the same team that we've been watching. 
This is a mentally, physically tough football team, and they know how to get it done. The other thing is, structurally, what happened in this game? Very good challenge by the head coach. A, a, a challenge that was made by Frank Reich that I agree with Mike Keith. You should have challenged it, but it wasn't good. That cost them the timeout they probably could have used at the end. This is as tough a football team mentally that I've ever seen because it takes a lot of mental toughness to do what they did. You just talked about those yardage, Rhett. Those were hard yards. 23-yarder, they had finally worn the Colts down, but that last run was not indicative of what he was up against all day. He was up against a solid wall, and they just kept pushing. And the Titans did it the way that Mike Vrabel has been talking about for weeks and the way they've gotten a lot of these last late wins is that they have extended drives with explosive plays. Coach Mack, by my count, they have about four point, I'm gonna call it 4.9 X plays because that second one to Austin Hooper was a 19 yarder, so it's just under that 20 yard mark. But they had five basically X plays in this. You had the play action to Ryan uh, Tannehill to Cody Hollister for 27 yards in the first quarter. You had the Henry 23 yard carry in the second quarter. You had Austin Hooper from Tannehill, a 23-yarder in the third quarter, and then a 19-yarder to Hooper here in the fourth quarter. That's, I, that's why I'm, I'm counting that an, an X play, because that basically is. It and is. then the 23-yard the yeah. run by Henry. Five X plays to their one X play. That's a big difference. And how about the turnovers, too? Turnovers. Three of those in both of these matchups, and three of them today. We talked about how big turnovers were going to be in this game. They were huge in the last matchup. And everything you said is 100% right, Rhett, but it took everybody on this roster to be able to get this done. That was, that was I, you know me, I love physical football. That's the way I was raised in this league a long time ago. That today was a wonderful exhibition of mental and physical toughness, and you've got to appreciate it. Mac, you always talk about the, the so, uh, score separation. The score wasn't separated a lot. It was 13 to nothing at half, and that's a nice little lead, but that can melt away in two seconds, as we have seen it before. You want the stat, I think, of the game? You had Jonathan Taylor coming back in this ball game for the first time in, what, three weeks or whatever. He had five carries for 40 yards in the first half. In the second half of this game, five more carries for just eight. Yards. There you are, Rhett. And what, how, how much did we talk about spot tackling all week? We talked about it in our opening for Titans Radio when we were on the air. Spot tackling is what they did. The spot tackling against big receivers was fabulous today. And those backs out there that got it in space, this, this Tennessee Titan football team did the things they had to do, the detailed things that are hard to do and that, that takes physical, physical want to to do. They did it. And they got help. To your point about it taking everybody, you got some help from unlikely places. Yes, we had a great pick by uh, David Long, but you had Adams and Mitchell who, were on, who weren't on this roster a month ago, as Mike alluded to in the broadcast. And he, the, both of them came up really big in this one. In fact, Adams, uh, he had 10 tackles in this and that pick six for 76 yards for a score. And how about Amani Hooker coming back from concussion protocol? Ten tackles of his own, and he was everywhere. Today. He was everywhere, and they used him in a lot of different places. And the thing that's so important to know, uh, this is, as Mike said, this, is, this team has the most people on injury reserve as anybody in the league. They continue to do it. They are following the same pattern they did last year, getting through 91 players. That comes from culture. That comes from the type of players that you bring in here. And Mike Vrabel and his staff and John Robinson and his staff deserve a lot of credit for bringing these type of players in here. And these players deserve all the credit for buying into it and getting it done. Tennessee Tough is not just a nice alliteration to say. It's reality. And a tip of the cap to Mike Vrabel in this. What a great challenge he had with 321 left in the ball game. When Matt Ryan connects, or we thought connected, to Michael Pittman, and it was immediately ruled an incomplete pass. That was hanky, red hanky was thrown by, by Vrabel, and it was overturned. It was a completed catch, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery by Amani Hooker. And no timeouts left for Frank Reich. That was major. And then the last time that that pile pushed, it looked like a rugby scrum for a first yes. down. That pretty much just showed the grit of this football team from start to finish. They found a way and they got it done. Final score from Nissan Stadium. The Titans get the win 
over the Indianapolis Colts, 19 to 10. Continuous coverage of your Titans after the game on Titans Radio's Locker Room Report.